Um, so I'm just going to do the recap and ignore this. So uh, last time on Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney, uh, we are in the storybook world of Labyrinthia, and we met up with the storyteller, the magic man who writes things down in the book, and then they happen in the story, which is the world we are in. Um... And that includes dark things, like people getting killed by witches. We also learned that Espella Contabella, our, our friend, is his daughter, and people suspect her of being either actually the evil main antagonist great witch, Bazella? Um, yes. Or, like, her reincarnation or something. And she is about to go on trial again. So I think we're going to start a trial this session. That is our assumption. Oh, oh yeah. We're going um, to the alchemist's hut. Yes. Who is question, questionably dead, and this little be bullied galactic member <laughs> is what's left behind. Yeah. Um, so the Inquisitors, who you can see on the screen, that uh, top right girl, she's the High Inquisitor. The Inquisitors have solved every witch related murder except one, which is this. Uh, so now we're here to talk to the uh, Guhua Water Boy from Genshin Impact and see what he has to say. Oh God, his name is. As cool. I mentioned a moment ago, I know very little about this matter. As a matter of fact, uh, it might be better to ask the Inquisitors. I can tell you about one thing, though, namely what occurred before the incident. Before the incident? Yes, it was three months ago, around the time that Master Belduke was murdered. Oh, someone else says this murder is the only one not written by the storyteller. And it was already into the small hours of the morning. Wow. That is a hella gender ambiguous voice. There was yeah. a thunderstorm on the way. And as the storm drew nearer, we quickly made our way home. Thunderstorm? That's a fucking spell, dude. Oh. oh. Fucking rad. Dope. Oh, was that not there before? Maybe that's his alchemy? <sighs> Who that? That's that him? The, that's him. That him. <gasps> you excited, Siv? Anyone would have been surprised at what we saw. But Master Belju, well, how can I? He reacted in a most peculiar way. Unlike others who saw it, he seemed unsettled, as if he was truly afraid of something. After that bell tower appeared, he changed completely. Master Belduke became a different man. His hair turned brown. It was white. <laughs> I'm so used to, uh, that's really funny, actually. <laughs> I'm so used to, like, trying to click ahead of dialogue so you can see it without the Discord latency and, like, read smoothly that I'm cutting off the actual voice actors a little bit. Hmm. Um, wh wait a second. Did you just say a bell tower appeared? Hey, that explains it. That must be what High Inquisitor Darklaw meant when she mentioned an incident involving the bell tower. To this day, I do not know what the Master was so afraid of. Do you think it was connected in some way to his death? I think it must have been magic. I mean, for a bell tower to just appear like that? <sighs> Mr. Grey Earl, do you mind if we have a look around? I know that the Inquisitors have already carried out a full investigation, but there just might be a clue or two with some connection- with some kind of connection to the Great Witch. Hmm. Well, I suppose. Providing I am allowed to accompany you, of course. There is sensitive equipment everywhere, and it is my responsibility to take care of it. I understand. We'll be careful. Hey, Nick! What if I eat this? <laughs> what if I <laughs> eat these orphans? <laughs> I wonder how the prosecutor... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got an upgrade. <laughs> is prosecutor an I'm upgrade? I'm so used to that word. Ah. I'm so used to it being prosecutor. <laughs> I wonder how the professor and Luke are doing with their visit to the storyteller. Yeah, I've been wondering about that too. A chance to meet with Labyrinthia's creator. Let's just hope they don't upset the guy and have some terrible plot twist written about them. They switch heights. That don't only happen <laughs> if it was you that visited the storyteller. Hello teller. there, my friends. I am Tiny Layton. I am 
My hat is now the size of the rest of my body. <laughs> He's like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> Tap my hat and I have dispensed Pika rats and puzzles. Blah, this is too blah. funny, Joey. You gotta stop. Blah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and do a big Luke voice. I know I can't. Oh, I, can't uh, I was I was fishing for it. Honestly. I can't. I'm laughing too hard. That'd only happen if it was you that visited the storyteller, Nick. The professor would never let anything like that happen. He's competent, and I make fun of you and ruin your day. <laughs> I've got a feeling they'll come back with some pretty useful leads. We have to do our best too, Nick. Let's keep up our side of this investigation. You got it, Maya. We're all in this together. Come on, let's see what we can find. That's the spirit. Can you find me? <laughs> You're I under the floorboards. I fell in a crack in the floor. Rolly Bowie's. Okay, Wyatt says he might be around in like an hour. Okay. <laughs> Phenomenal cuisine. Great, which bazella will be tried in the court? Wait, what does Luke sound like again? <laughs> you basically got it. Hang on, I'm gonna turn this down even further. It's like so loud in my ears. Let's go to two percent. That will be Labyrinthia's final chapter. Yeah, he has a voice. I'm gonna do my own voice for him. Mm -hmm. A fitting end for a town ruled by witches and their magic. Am I to believe that this final chapter has already begun? That is correct. And there is no way you can possibly change its final outcome. Hmm. I wonder about that. I would y intervene. <laughs> this isn't even my final form, Mr. Storyteller. You will not be able to defeat Luke and I when... <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Layton's a really good job. There's some art of Tiny Layton, please. <laughs> you see, I gave my word to a young lady... I promised that without fail, I would be able to rescue her. If I'm not mistaken, the Great Witch Trial will begin in two weeks' time, the same day on which you will hold your next parade. I believe that should give us sufficient time to show you what we can do. Such a smug countenance. I find it intolerable. I beg your pardon? Leighton is tiny now. <laughs> Oh my god, that quill. <laughs> it looks like a sword. I know, that's I thought he was gonna fucking mm. shank him. Two weeks from now. I don't I don't know how to do this voice with a British accent, so you guys are gonna have to bear with me. British Brit even like Leighton's accent isn't really British. That's just what the dude has mm -hmm. done. Um God. Trying to pick I'm trying to pick a bake off contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Cheat cheat. Two weeks from now, you say. I'm afraid that information is out of date, Herschel Layton. Out of date? Uh, what do you mean? My parade will be held the tomorrow. day after tomorrow, according to the amended story. What? The, the day after tomorrow? That's not fair! I love that Luke animation! <laughs> I understand the feeling well, Luke. My hat is easy to lose because I'm so tiny. Now that's you hold the- hold on to the brim of it, you can just fly. Now that's the kind of countenance I want from the characters in my story. What? That's what I do, didn't you know? I decide the fate of characters who have no knowledge of their future. It would appear that you are not yet fully aware of the gravity of the situation. Let me see now. Just for fun, I'll write you a little story. A story full of surprises and a few tears. I shall enjoy seeing the emotions of the characters as they play their parts. A story for us? Stories are a fixture of this town. You would be wise to embrace them. Let's see. I think we need a stimulating incident. Mm, we shall have a witch, some witchcraft, and perhaps a little death. Death? You can't! Oh, but I can. Let me see. 
This is a golden opportunity to use the alchemist's residence. How about this? Your comrade meets with death by golden curse in the alchemist. Kill Maya. Please kill Maya. Kill Maya. Oh my god. The worst thing they could do is take Nick out of the equation mm -hmm. and have Maya be blamed for it, which is the thing they always fucking do. Mm. Hey, look, Nick, a golden apple, huh? You deserve this. Hmm, <laughs> this could be a truly interesting story. No way! Feel free to act as you wish when playing Take your role in the story. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so... How can you? I'm afraid these aren't my massive testicles. You've just kicked two more golden apples, my boy. No! I'm turning to gold! I, I... Curse you, Midas! The beginning of a new tragedy, or farce. The victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. Alchemy. That was me badly trying to sing the Yumi Neko opening. Uh. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Where's Kyle when we need him? A man from afar falls to a golden curse. No! And, and a woman no! from afar cries out in grief. I know how this series no! works. Yep, nope, yep, yep, yep. I know how Ace Attorney works. The woman is captured. Could I, could I perhaps persuade you to switch it, sw around. switch it around? I mean, everyone just will be expecting everything it. Everything else is fine. Just, just do a little switcheroo. Please, come on. Just, just two names. Swap them out. A little yeah. switcheroo, you say? Yeah. This is not what I meant. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love how weak you are to this joke. I'm imagining him like a little Lego man. It's yeah. Not a woman is captured. Her dark trial begins. The fiery pit will cleanse her sins. You know what? I can respect him outright trying to kill Maya, though. Kill Maya Faye. Just burn her alive. Put her in a cage. A man from afar falls a golden curse, and a woman from afar cries out in grief. This must be referring to the awful woman and Mr. Wright. Oh, if we don't do something, Mr. Wright will be in danger. There's no time to lose, Luke. Let's go and find them. Well, you are, Professor. Hmm, the story has already been written, and no matter what you do, you will not change the result. I do not agree. What we, could, what we do next can change the future in any number of ways. I'm sure that's what you want to believe. In fact, a naive outburst like that could be a poignant plot point. Please be my guest. Your words may help to raise the tension and bring a little excitement to my story. I, I like that we're me- <laughs> Luke, shut the hell up! <laughs> Luke! Now is not the time. We need to help Mr. Wright. Okay. Let's go, Professor. Better hurry! I'm surprised and kind of delighted we're meeting this guy this early and he's already just like, I am the antagonist. Fuck you! Oh, my world. I, I do the lock. Yeah, they're all talking about Maya and how to save her. I'm just going to omit her every time. <laughs> hmm. Professor, do you hear the flapping sound coming this way? The sound of a large bird, perhaps. Uh, uh, oh, oh! Oh, that's the owl we saw in the audience room. It's holding a letter in its mouth. Not to mention watching us intently. Perhaps he wants us to tell us something. I said that wrong. I'll try talking <laughs> to him and using my words. What won't you? I feel like you gotta be the owl. That's pretty good. Thank you. What can we do for you? I've got it, Professor. Who, that's the owl, says a letter was delivered to the storyteller three months ago. To the storyteller. If that's so, then we can't very well keep it. After all, it's wrong to read letters addressed to someone else. That's what the owl said. But he also said there's absolutely nothing written on the sheets of parchment inside the envelope. Sorry, envelope. 
Look, Professor, see, they're totally blank. A letter with nothing written on it. That is indeed most curious. And another thing, Professor. The owl says his letter was sent by the alchemist. What's that, my boy? Written by the alchemist? Do you remember what In the, the story? Well? <laughs> What's that, my boy? <laughs> it talks to Luke like that. I would love that twist where like Luke could talk to animals, and at the end of the game, it's just like, yes, Luke, my dog companion, and it's like Twilight Zones, and Luke has been a puppy the entire Ooh. time. Luke would be a cute little puppy, I think. Yeah. Do you remember a what the eagle? Do you remember what the storyteller wrote in that story he penned a moment ago? A victim of the Golden Curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy, which probably means the place at which this incident will occur. Oh. It's the home of the one who sent this letter. In other words, at the alchemist's house, right, Professor? It appears the address of this sender, Sir Belduke, is written on the envelope. Which means, we'd better make our way there immediately. <gasps> Thanks, Mr. Hill! Whoa! Picks up Luke and carries him away. The address on the envelope is somewhere near the town square. That's a little far from here, Professor. We might not make it in time. I think we'd better run! Luke, my boy, we had the need to rent a steed! <laughs> Bobby will hear you say that. I think you're right, Professor. That would be far quicker than running. Whoa! Quickly, Luke. There's no time to lose. Hey, easy boy. Oh, this horse is certainly spirited. My favorite thing about Professor Layton is that he has every skill required in any situation. It just only comes up a kid. Like, he's almost a Mary Sue. Like, in that way, but he's so likable, yeah. you don't but care. he's a renaissance man. He's a renaissance man. I love Professor Layton and Luke so much. Like, They're very good. My enjoyment when we're following them, as opposed to these two, is enormous. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Say, Nick, have you noticed how the color of that wall is a little golden? No, it's green. It's different. <laughs> Maya, you're colorblind. God. What? <laughs> I think I've investigated enough crime scenes crime scenes by now to notice something as obvious as that, Maya. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but actually there was a small fire here a while ago. It was my fault. The wall ended up a little bit singed in the process. The fire is because he was trying to light a fire underneath invisible oh, ink. ink. Yeah, which is what's it's written green. on the letters. Now that you mention it, there are some signs of a fire. I, I should really stop trying to like get ahead of myself in these cases. It literally always fucks me. Yeah. There are some. There are some signs of a fire on the floor there too. Yes, that's correct. Anyway, I decided to paint the wall myself. Why would you pick green? <laughs> Such a weird color to choose. Looks like Mr. Gray Earl is way handier with his herbs than with a paintbrush. I let a candle set fire to some dry straw. In all my time as a butler, I've never made such a major blunder. That's nah, not that bad. You're being a little hard on yourself. That's right. It's not so bad. I burned down the entire Wright & Co. law offices. You think that's bad? You should see me. I'm ignoring you. you. I'm going to pin this on you. I I feel really bad always doing this. Like, I'm going to skip Siv's line because I hate the character she's voicing jokes. No, but I, like, I get it. They're always bad. I'm so happy Luke is here. <laughs> That, that's why I was like, at the first part, I was like, you should voice Nick. And you're like, I'm getting nothing from this guy. Let's I'm, switch. I'm, and very, I'm very charmed by this comment in chat because of the way that they said it. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not like the witches have extraterrestrial rights. I mean, I'm down for alien witches. Okay, oh that was one time. Anyway. <laughs> Someone in chat. That's why we're in England. We're waiting for the office to be repaired. Hmm. Let's go check out Mr. Belduke's study. While we're here, could you show us around your room a little, Mr. Grey Earl? Of course. If it will bring you any closer to finding the truth, be my guest. However, as the Knights of the Inquisition have ordered that the crime scene be left undisturbed, I must ask that you refrain from touching anything while you're in the study. Sure. We'll be careful. Unless Maya's here. Uh-oh.
You did a bad job, Grail. Yeah, this is pretty. This is pretty bad. I, I short, but like I, I, I got a little careless and failed to properly extinguish the fire. I painted the wall green so as to cover the discoloration caused by the fire. You know what else would cover up discoloration on a wall? Painting it the same color as the other walls. <laughs> Well, I had to use this bobbly zinc somehow. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I assume that's all the same thing. Looking for coins. Who is G John? Jean? I, I legitimately don't know who that is. Am I an idiot? Do we meet a person? I'm not recognizing the name off the bat. Lovely breeze. I was looking at some concept art for this game where they drew uh, Leighton and Maya in the, um, like they were trying to find their style and, oh yeah. God, I keep clicking this. I'm an idiot. I, I kind of wish they put everyone in the Leighton size. I think it would have been cute, mm. <laughs> even mm. though it makes no sense, but... Oh, Jean Greerl is the full name. I okay, see. thank you. Wow, sure is a lot of gold. Hey, look! A summoning circle! <laughs> God, I'm stupid. I'm not reading that. <laughs> That's an alchemist circle, Maya. We're not in a wheat field. There's not extraterrestrial rites going on. <laughs> I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please be sure not to touch anything. You heard him, Maya. That means keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do the touching with my eyes. Go, go, gadget eyeballs. I, I'm so disturbed. I'm not even going to stop her with your eyes. I'm, I'm here for space witches. I would love it if you guys weren't joking. The golden orb. Alchemy. Alchemy. <laughs> Let's try and bring my older sister back, Nick. Oh, shit. They spilled all the coke. <laughs> oh, cocaine is legal in Labyrinthia. <laughs> they were just going to say, oh, cocaine is legal in London. I see that shit. Hey, that's a pretty little picture over there. We could use a picture like this back at the office, don't you think? We could hang it right next to Charlie. Hmm. That's an interesting way to read that name. I don't I didn't fucking know. Charlie? <laughs> You've never just Charlie? It's just a normal name, Sith. <laughs> that's uh, their that's their house plant. Oh, I see. The wall behind this picture frame. The wall? Oh, it, it's green. I wonder if there's something hidden behind this painting. Hey, Nick, look at this! The wall behind the painting. It's painted green! What? No, don't look at that. Is there a problem? Uh, no. No problem. Huh. This could be some kind of clue. Could you imagine if the Inquisition legitimately missed that somehow? Hmm. They're too distracted by the painting itself. Oh, it's just so lovely. Hey, so real real quick, I just want to point out how I love in all of the, uh, for all of my complaints about the Ace Attorney series, especially these spinoffs, I really, really like how they kept the Dual Destinies and Onward style investigation where you can see everything that's investigable so you don't just have to pixel hunt. Because investigations are boring. <laughs> That's a really weird way to hang that curtain, especially under a candle. Well, that's probably the reason why. That cabinet's open. Hmm. Oh yeah, I haven't looked at the coke yet. What on earth? Looks like a load of white powder has been scattered around the desk. Uh, wow. About this white powder, has it been here since the incident? That's right. It was just like this when I entered the room on the morning following the incident. Well, that means nobody's walked through it, so nobody's seen the green stuff. Yeah. Did um someone ask, have we played 
I, I'm gonna pr butcher this. Dai Gaku Kikugu Saiban, the, the Japanese one. Dai no. Gyakuten Saiban. Thanks. No. Uh, we are planning on doing those after this game. It'll take Siv and I eight years to read through all of the uh, Ace Attorney games, but we're doing it. I have left it this way ever since. And I guess someone must have dropped a container full of some medicine. Please, try not to walk in it. You may leave footprints. Now that you said it, all I want to do is leave little old... God, you're useless. I just... I just hate people who like Maya a lot, frankly. Because, like... We made fun of it in passing in our Ace Attorney video, but, like... Mm -hmm. There are some Maya stands out there, and I do not get it. Because she's girl. There's other girls in the franchise, though. And, like, people don't like Athena. And Athena has, like, a personality, and she's she's a cute girl. What's the problem? And she's nice. Yeah, Athena and Apollo have the, act like, legitimately... They're only together in, like, one case... Uh, because of how the last two games shake out, but there's one case where you are playing as Athena as your main and Apollo as your assistant, and it is the best dynamic in the whole series because um, both of them are competent people, but, like, Athena's goofy enough that she misses some things, and Apollo is, like, very much a universal straight man in those games. Uh, and they are also friends, so it's fun to watch them investigate. Trucy is fantastic, too. I, I don't think I agree with you, but I like her more than Maya. I like Trucy more in the games that aren't Apollo Justice. Maya, try not to step in any of that. The last thing we want to do is leave footprints all over the flight. Oh, my God. Ooh, urge to leave footprints everywhere rising. Uh, Athena and Black Quill is also a great combination. Yes, that, that case is very fun. Maya's too goofy and silly. The, yeah, the problem is, like, you can be goofy and silly, but you gotta be able to contribute something. And Maya just should not be here at any point in any venture. She is, like, actively useless outside of her ability to channel spirits. Which, like, which she doesn't do. Yeah, Blackwell's really good. Um, I feel like I'm still missing something. What? Well, let's talk to him again. Hmm. What's the matter, Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, it's, uh, actually, it's that pendant. I must say, I find it fascinating. That's my whole crux. Oh, you mean this old thing? <laughs> it's useless to me. I never use it. Magatama. Well, now that's a little unfair. There is a... Oh, God, is that Maya? Maybe... Oh, man, is it Pearl? No, they would have to be Maya. Um, There is a puzzle in the third case in the third game where a gross old man won't give you any clues until you yep. channel yep. Maya's older sister who has huge tits, so Maya has huge tits. Uh, that is my least favorite case in the series besides... Like, in the main series. I fucking hate that case. It is nothing but stupid mirror bullshit. Yep. You could say it's kind of like my source of power, I guess. I understand. Stones are often charged with energy, after all. The pendant you're wearing is pretty neat, too. It's such a mysterious color. Oh, this? It's an amethyst. Master Belduke asked me to wear it. It contains my soul. An amethyst? Yeah, this thing, th this guy's definitely a homunculus. Yeah. The amethyst brings about good vibrations and an alchemy sense. Hmm. Mr. Grey Earl? No, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Belduke. Ooh, someone in chat. Oh no, I'm in the middle of that case. I'm I'm so sorry. The worst part of that case is the conceit of it is so fun. Where it's just like this shitty gangster who has the same haircut as Nick walks into court and gets an, a client. Like, he just bombs a case on purpose pretending to be Nick, and nobody notices it's not Nick, even though they almost look nothing alike, which is so funny and stupid. And then the rest of that case is utter dog shit. I, fu I fucking hate that case so much. <laughs> he gave me this stone and accepted me as his assistant alchemist. 
Um, this is a lot. A after this, I'll start ignoring chat again. Um, wait, you hate that more than the circus case with the 24-year-old and ventriloquist dummy fighting for the affections of an underage doofus girl? I do. I don't... I, I think that's the worst case in terms of writing, but that case is, like, so bad it looped around for me to be like, what's the answer to every puzzle? The dumbest thing I can imagine. And I was like, this... This operates only on moon logic, whereas that stupid mirror case is like, oh, you didn't follow our completely bat, like bat shit logic, but we're still taking ourselves seriously. I don't know. It's like, it's somehow worse to me. I don't know. But now, Master, such is the order of the natural world. Seems like Gray Earl really misses him. He must have really respected Sir Bell Duke. You look sad. As a sociopath, I don't understand that emotion. You're thinking of psychopaths, Maya. They're the same. They're, they're not. What? <laughs> what? Camera cuts to her. She's like face down on the ground like a dog snorting the cocaine. Well, I think we've just about investigated everything we can for now. But we didn't find any leads on the Great Witch. Oh, uh... Mr. Grey Earl. Yes, what is it? Is there anywhere else you can think of where we might find more clues? Let me see. Well, there is a cellar under the study. That's where the master kept his research materials. Oh, I'm sorry, Maya moved, so I thought that was yeah, her. Yeah, no, that seemed like a Maya. A cellar under this room? Yes, there's a trap door in the floor leading down to the cellar. A room containing Belduke's research materials. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a quick look at that room. I see. Uh, very well. If you'll please just wait a moment. Be sure not to cocaine. touch nothing but the lamp. There is a hand of Midas, and if you touch it, you'll turn to gold. <laughs> that ladder leads down to the cellar, but be careful. It's rather dark down there. It looks like it might be a little cramped down there, too. Maya, you'll have to stay up here. What? That's true. Perhaps it is a little bit small for the both of you at once. I'm small. I'll go down there. And okay, she, Nick, this she, is she goes down there. Anyway. She goes down there. Nick slowly lowers and locks the cellar door. Grey Earl, I will pay you anything. Oh, to... You don't have to pay me. I, I, I've known her for moments and I understand. <laughs> I, I lied. There's nothing down there. <laughs> What do you mean? I don't know. I guess you're just more suited to small, dark, damp places. You're like a mushroom. I'm not a rat, you know. Oh, come on. You know that's not what I mean. I'll just stay up here and snoop around for some clues. It's not snooping, Maya. It's investigating. Anyway, you do that. I'll be right back. Yay! Way to go, Nick. Wow. Well, I should return <laughs> to my room. I need to recharge. Please give me a call as soon as you have both finished. Okay, got it. You know, you remind me of my friend. He's a detective. I think he's a, he's a golem, too. Huh? Oh. All right, this case is golden great. Goat. It's It's got a golden goat. Is that a well in the corner? Is that a fucking witching well? Hmm. It's a little chilly down here. Doesn't look like it's been used much. The air is so musty and stale. Anyway, better hurry up and take a look around. Love to have no Maya. Hint coin touched gold, you're dead. <laughs> that, that'd be like a fun mechanic for a video game where like if you touch your curse, so if you touch gold, you turn into it and the game is to avoid getting money from any droppables or something. Like that mm. sounds like it could be a fun five hour indie Anti puzzle game. Anti-capitalism. I mean, I'm always here for it. Well, well, well. If this isn't a well, looks like it's still in use, too. I'm guessing you need quite a bit of clean water for alchemy. Come to think of it, I haven't noticed any plumbing here in Labyrinthia. Look out below! Sploosh. <laughs> this well must have been built here specifically to provide water for alchemical research. Okay, that's probably the same thing. A least... little dolly? Weep. Whittle Dolly. Looks like Sir Belduke studied alchemy here too. 
I don't see anything medicine-like, but there sure is a lot of equipment. This desk is pretty messy. Not a speck of dust, though. I guess Grey Earl, Grey Earl must be keeping it clean. There's a wooden box by the desk, filled with all kinds of junk. A doll is peeping out of the box. I wonder if it was left by a little girl who was one of the doctor's patients. Or it's a spellos. Are those steaks? Uh, they kind of look like steaks, yeah. Maybe vials. Ooh. Mortar and pestle. <laughs> I have someone in chat. I haven't noticed any pl plumbing. Haven't you been to the bathroom at all? You see, when we got those mem... <laughs> we got memories of shitting in chamber pots for five years. Or however long they thought That's they were... That's all they gave us. They didn't even <laughs> give us baking knowledge. Just pooping in buckets. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It looks like Sir Belduke carried out research here as well. Oh, okay. Oh, there's like... Oh, no, never mind. I thought there was something under the desk. All right, let's look at this Same goat, goat that's... For last. Yeah, because it's obviously going to turn me into a, a, a sculpture. Looks like mm -hmm. a sculpture of a goat, I think. Something about it gives me the creeps. Wait a second, is this... This thing is completely made of gold! Could this be the result of alchemy? I guess in this town, anything's possible. If Maya were here, she'd break her back trying to take that goat away with her. That's strange. Yeah, stealing. Almost everything in this room is covered in a layer of dust. Everything except for that goat, you that is. You got the goat? Mm, seems to have been kept goat in pris pristine condition. Don't do this. Well, looks like a... I mean, that would get me for sure. I'd absolutely pat the goat. <laughs> well, looks well, like I've... got the cloth on it, man. I've pretty much seen all there is to see down here. The room doesn't seem to have been used much, and there's nothing I can see that might provide a lead. If I stay here any longer, I might just end up covered in dust myself. Not to mention, standing here sighing is kind of clogging up my lungs. Maybe it's time I head back upstairs. I should probably see how Maya's doing. Also, like, Nick is fine, but he's pretty boring. Mm-hmm. You're not a lot of flavor there. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love this. So, do you want to be that purple one? Because I imagine he and Bardley are going to have a bard fight at some point in the You're story. You're probably right. God, I hope that's the murderer. <laughs> this is the alchemist's house. We have to hurry. <laughs> Professor! <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> Why are you panting, Luke? We're on horses. <coughs> oh. Miss Faye. I'm horse powered! <laughs> Good read. What? Mr. Wright, have you seen him? Oh, Nick. He's just down in the basement doing some investigating. He should be back up. So how did it go? Did you get to see the storyteller? Please, get Mr. Wright immediately. <coughs> it's safer if we're all together in one place. I'm gonna I'll push him down onto Mr. the golden huh? goat. As things stand, Mr. Wright is in serious danger. Nick's in danger? What do you mean? I have reason to believe that a witch will appear here soon. Do you happen to be the great witch Bazella? Concern yourselves not with who I am, but rather with what you will now become. <laughs> oh no, Leighton! <gasps> no! Oh man, this this is a lot here. Uh <laughs> Deary, deary me. I wish Aram were here. Whatever is the matter, child? You look positively flustered. Grisabel! Sir Belduke is no longer resident here. You'll need to go elsewhere for your medicaments. I know that. Let me through. It's a matter of life and death. <laughs> life and death, you say? Is something I may foresee a hit ballad. Nice to see you and Lamp characters doing a fusion dance. Yeah. Raise off your hearts and sing with Birdly, my bird is a cracker. First, second, and thirdly. What the fuck is that meter? Oh, this must be that rival Mr. Bardley was talking about. Anyway, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> oh, 
dearie, dearie me. Please, you two. Oh, we're coming with you. Oh, it's this guy again. It's this guy. No. No. Catch him. Oh my God. Witnesses. Oh. Pro Professor Layton, no! No! The words the storyteller wrote really did come true. And in the worst possible way, a man from afar falls to a golden curse. At first, I thought he was referring to Mr. Wright, but I got it all wrong. It was about the professor. Oh, good cry! <laughs> no! Okay, Luke, he died saving me! Belinda Valentine. What? Is that not her performance? Mm. No. No! No! <laughs> no, I don't want to save. Turn back time. Oh, missed quite a few of them. That's fine. Yeah, we didn't do any fucking puzzles. Yeah, I mean, they they kind of... I, I think they were spread about town, so we would have gotten mm. them last time. Mm. Chapter, four. Chapter four. Oh, okay. No, go what for it. What the fuck? Oh, shit, well, we missed it. The golden cord. It doesn't make sense. How has it come to this? That, uh, the darned witch... Why did it have to happen to the professor of all people? It could have been Maya! It could have been me! You've gotta believe me, Nick. I may be a spirit medium, but I'm no witch! Nick! You think you think I act like this for fun? I've been trying to get someone to kill me for years and it never happens! Wow. Wow! Don't worry, I know it wasn't you. Hey, have you seen Luke today? I haven't seen him since last night. He was crying all night. I didn't know what to say to him. Oh. No kidding. He's the one suffering most from all this. Poor kid. He probably needs some time alone with his grief. We should leave him be. Yeah, he shouldn't have to see this trial. It'd be too hard for him. Oh, it's Espella. What are you doing here, Espella? Have you been cleared of the accusations? Oh, God, no. No, not yet. If only it was that easy. I'm not technically under arrest, so I got special permission to come here. I'm free to go wherever I like within this building. Ah, I see. Um, I... I heard about Mr. Layton. It's awful. He... Such a good man. I like how everyone is appropriately reacting to this literally being the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> and <laughs> AA7 leaks, Maya fucking dies and nobody cares. Legit, if they ever do another lace, uh, a lace attorney game, I would love it if the final case they ended on was Maya is accused, uh, uh, Nick gets killed somehow and Maya is accused of it and it turns out she's guilty. Like, maybe not even on purpose, but it is her fault. Just be like, get mm. get that bitch out of here. Luke, re <laughs> Luke what, returns as the... the <laughs> Sorry, someone in chat. Luke returns as the edgy inquisitor Luke. <laughs> w would love it. Apologizing for? We were supposed to find clues connected to Bazella, but we couldn't find anything. And now the professor's been... Don't say that. It's not your fault. And I don't believe a word of what they say about Maya. She isn't a witch. She's She's far too really useless. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't possibly. Thank you, Espella. Um, Miss Ra, do you mind if I assist you in court to get the fuck out oh, of here? Oh, please, Maya? please, Shoot. God. Shoot. 
Um, Is oh, Maya. Her with a broom? Maya, can you go and, like, get us some apples? Nick, I'm the accused! <laughs> huh? No, I may not be of much use. But I'll do what I can. I want to help you and Maya. A spella. Uh, is this me? Oh, no, it's you. It is me. Excuse me. Your... Grey Earl, the butler of the late Master Belduke. I have come to inquire after Miss Maya. It is most regrettable what happened yesterday. Oh, thank you for coming all the way here. Huh? You look really pale, Jean. Are you all right? I have forgotten to ch Oh, it's green! It's green! Oh shit, you're I'm right! Out of battery! <gasps> or is there two of them? Oh, <gasps> hmm, hmm. Oh, please don't worry about me. It's merely that since the incident, sleep has eluded me. Oh, I spent the night searching through Master's notes on alchemy. I hope there may be some mention of a method by which something turned to gold may be reverted back to its original form. You were looking for a way to rescue the professor. Human fate is often cruel, that I would know about it. But that's also why we must never lose hope. <laughs> Aw, John. Defender! Accused! The trial's about to start! Proceed to the chamber! Yes, we're coming! Nick? Cheer up, Maya. I'm not just going to let them sentence you. Alright guys, group huddle. Everyone but Maya. Alright, we're totally gonna let her get a guilty verdict. Of course, of course, yes, of course. <laughs> I just wish all this would stop already. Whether someone's a witch or not. No one deserves to be burned. I know. I can't stand for it either. <laughs> if, if you'll kindly excuse me now, I must return to my duties. Um, no problem. We, uh, appreciate you coming to see us. <laughs> he just blows away like dust! That coke on the ground! It was his brother! Oh my god. That would be kind of interesting, oh actually. <laughs> when you when you say a joke and we're like, wait, hang on. Some, <laughs> something's bothering me. John seems somewhat odd today. Let's go, Mr. Wright. The trial is about to begin. Do you think one of the Jeans is actually the uh, transformed alchemist? Probably, yeah. Uh, I wish I'd gotten a uh, take note of like if the alchemist was wearing a different colored gem at the time. The trial of Maya Fay shall now begin. You're very, very proper. Proper. Very good. Knights of the court, are you ready to cross your swords? Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum always has his sword ready for the work of justice. Uh, defense ready, Your Honor. At this stage, I just gotta give it all I've got. It would appear the defender has thrown down the gauntlet. So now, before we Ooh, begin, Ooh, he called you I out. Have a word with you, defender. Yes, Your Honor. Last time we met, you stood in this court as an apprentice baker. In all honesty, when I saw you for the first time, I thought to myself, a baker should stick to bread baking. Is that so? What a fine first impression I made. However, today you are not merely some befuddled maker of sweet buns. I'm obliged to fully... Someone has stolen your sweet roll. As a knight of law and justice, on par with Inquisitor Zacharias Bar... Please don't remind me. Now may your duel begin. Fight bravely and expose the truth behind this heinous crime. I'm glad the judge has accepted us, I guess. Jesus! They treat him like some sort of celebrity. He may be adored by the crowds, but when he pointed his sword, the crudes. you managed to shield him from his accusations. Maya clearly isn't a witch, so surely your victory is certain. Is this game's judge as ridiculous as the Ace Attorney judges? No, he seems a lot more down to earth, actually. I have given you leave to come to this trial today. However, that does not mean that the charges against you have been dropped. Rather than worry about others, you should consider your own situation. What am I supposed to do? Just sit in a jail cell and not be a witch? I cast not witch! Inquisitor Barnum. Alright, so 
uh, last time I was both, uh, you were Barnum in the trial and I took him over. How do, how do we want to split this up? Cause you have to be either judge or Barnum. Um, I will be Barnum so that you're not talking to yourself as Nick. Sounds good. I, I really like voicing Barnum, but that's probably the right call. Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin your opening statement. As you wish, my lord. As usual, let us commence this trial by first recounting the events. If it pleases you, Sir Blue Knight. As uh, you wish, Inquisitor. I still can't get used to this terminology. This height. Highness. <laughs> this heinous crime occurred on the residence of the late Newton Belduke, the alchemist. Here is the sketched plan of his residence. What a nice little house. This room, of a somewhat questionable nature, is the alchemist's study in which the incident took place. Hello. <laughs> it's me, Tiny Layton. De depicted to scale. <laughs> The only ones present at the moment of the crime were the accused and the victim. No one else. The witnesses who arrived at the scene seconds later have indicated where they found the accused and the victim. Very well. The sketch is accepted as evidence. The accused took Sir Layton's life with the most cruel of magic. A living man one second, a golden statue the next. Such wickedness. Magic that turns things into gold? Sure, why not? Several townspeople rushed to the room and paid witness to the horror of this magic. The accused has been captured and charged. Goodness, that is terrifying. Rumors have reached me that the victim was a most scintillating man. I'm not quite certain whether it was prior to or after, but incidentally... Was this Sir Layton not the same hat maker who attended our previous trial? No, no, he, he wasn't a hat maker. Bizarre as it is, Sir Layton's profession and origin remain unknown. He was a stranger in this city, that is all we know. Mm. And you, sir, his acquaintance, you are an. Are you. Beep, 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 you weird. I still can't understand this terminology. <laughs> hmm. Today's case certainly is peculiar. And that is not the last of the peculiar peculiarities. How would you say that with the peculiarities? Yeah, yeah, I, peculiarities. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess okay. you just kind of swing the yarities. The alchemist study has been the scene of another strange incident in the past. Ah, yes, I remember it as if it were yesterday. The mysterious Duke of Newton... The mysterious Duke of Newton Death... To, I remember it as if it were yesterday. <laughs> Indeed, my lord. We have <laughs> the only case to... <laughs> Witchcraft still to remain unsolved in our fair city. The witch may have escaped a punishment back then. But perhaps today is the day on which both of these mysterious crimes shall be solved. What? What are you implying? Scary music. Patience. You will know soon enough, sir. Suddenly pale blue knight. It's kind of funny. How interesting. It seems that the Inquisition have something up their sleeve. Now, Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin. Just walks over and stabs Maya. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. The Inquisition summons the witnesses to this malicious crime of witchcraft. If only... If only I'd made it to the room sooner. Maybe I could have prevented all this from happening. I won't let Maya take the rap for this. I will find every single crack in their testimony and throw her down it. Oh, yeah, hello. My lord. Welcome to the witch's court, honorable witnesses. Now, let us hear your names and occupations. I am known far and wide as a mere punching bag. Get... stole the gold from the room. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Hold on. I gotta go get my medication. All right. We'll, we'll pause here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-DM Wyatt, because now would be an excellent time.
How you doing, chat? I guess I should also get a drink. Also, that guy's name is fucking excellent. His name is Amir Punching Bag. Jello, I cannot hear you. Boop, 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 boop. Oh. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> All right. Do you, do you want? Did you get the pun with this stupid name? Amir Punching Bag. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I am known for. This guy's voice was a lot. I'm trying to remember it. Because he was fucking drunk before. I am known far and wide as a mere punching bag the first. Soon to be the new head of punching bags retail organization, Pro. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait a minute, witness. What's that, blue squire? You're, you're that guy from the previous trial. Just what the heck's happened to you? You look like you've been on one of those ultimate makeover shows. Mm, um, whatever do you mean? My name is the Punching Bag the First, soon to be the head of Punching Bags Retail Organization Pro. What, what is the meaning of this, Inquisitor? I have no idea. I do not care to delve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Looks like he remembers him all too well. Witnesses, pray continue. How many old. Who is it? Oh, dearie, dearie me. It is I who usually asks the questions. I am, you see, but a humble teacher. Call me Miss Primstone. Fire and Primstone. The children of Labyrinthia Primary School have the privilege of learning the truths about this world from me. An elementary school teacher, huh? Good to know at least one of the witnesses seems sensible. <laughs> The winds carry my song, it's birdly stringing along. Parrot and bard ensemble, avant-garde. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with him. It's, it's all right, Siv. I've got so many oops I fucked up that bardly lines in the bank that, like, you've, you've got way, you've got a bunch of fuck-ups before we <laughs> I got a way to go. Yeah. My faithful muse here is Cracker the Musical Parrot. No one understands music like Cracker, aside from me, naturally. Oh, dearie, dearie me. At least it's not another goat. God, come on, pan over and have the goat lady there again. Please, God. I was looking in through the window. He just imitated that teacher perfectly. I love this guy's design. It's so good. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm Link Triton. My occupation is the professor's apprentice. Luke? Luke, but, but why? What are you doing there? I made up my mind. I'm doing this for the professor. A gentleman has to pursue the truth. But Luke, that's where the inquis uh, that's where the inquisition's witnesses stand. Uh, I'll never I'll never forgive that witch. A gentleman shouldn't glare at people as if he wants to hit them in the face. Oh no, look, do it. Your friend today can be your enemy tomorrow. Such is the hard reality of the battlefield. Everyone shut up. Witnesses, we will now hear your testimonies. Tell us all of this wicked incident. I'm, I'm actually delighted to see Luke on the stand there. Mm -hmm. Which you have been unfortunate enough to witness. Oh, this bottle of poison I do. I heard a scream and an incantation, and then when I entered the room, the victim was already all shiny. Mayhap something caused discord between erstwhile friends. Mr. Silk Hat had a knife at the ready, in his hand. Victim of magic sparkly and done for, I heard the stock fall on the floor. Yep, this never, never has the right meter. Nope. Professor must have seen through Miss Maya's deception and confronted her right there, face to face. Oh. I see. Thank you all. 
However, one part of the testimony was somewhat confusing. You there, the singer. Me? Singer, could you possibly mean me, Birdly the Bard, your excellence? Yes, that would be you, singer. This staff that you said, sung about. I am a witch. <laughs> Tis I. It is as you suspect, my lord, this very witch's scepter. <sighs> There are two different magic gems attached, meaning the perpetrator could have used two types of magic. Yeah. Oh, like the um gem in uh, Earl Grey's. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's an amethyst. You're right. Yeah, it would seem so. This gem here enables the use of a gold transmutation spell, Goldor. And the other one, alas, <laughs> Goldor. And then the powering gem that rules above it, Rita Repulsa. Goldor. Just the word alone makes the tiny hairs on the back- I don't remember his voice. On the back of my neck stand up. Doing these two back and forth is very difficult. <laughs> That's the one, all right. That's a dreadful incantation that I, a mere punching bag, the first, also heard. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I've seen that scepter, so I have. Clank. Tips over the gold, and man, the scepter falls. Not the witch's plan. Oh, dearie, dearie me. How dare she do that to the professor? By the way, this witch's scepter was found on the floor near the victim. Uh, trans one says, right. So Amir sure as shit wasn't there. He was there. Uh, he, he ran. He was, just last minute. I don't yeah. know where the fuck he was outside, though. If you'll turn your attention to the sketched plans, it was located right here. On a pile of cocaine. Mm-hmm. Eh? A scepter drop. Oh. Hello, Wyatt. Hi. Um. How you doing? Uh, I'm okay, man. How are you? Uh, I could be better, personally, but we're playing a game, and this is fun. You. Yeah, you, yeah. um. You, can you say some words so I can sound balance you real quick? Absolutely not. I refuse to speak to you, Jello, especially if you ask me specifically to speak, because that's just patronizing at that point. You're like, can you please talk so I can All do right, this thing? All that, right, that's... I don't, I don't agree <laughs> with that. That's that's absurd. You're cutting in and out a little bit, but your volume seems good. Um, okay, so we are... Uh, yeah, my internet connection is amazingly unstable. Awesome. So, um... We are we are playing Professor Layton versus uh, Ace Attorney, and we are starting our third trial. Professor Layton was turned to gold by a witch, uh, Maya, who is on paper our friend, uh, is being accused of the witch, and we as players don't like her, but in universe we're supposed to. Um, yeah. And how this game works, I don't know how. Are you familiar with either Layton or the Ace Attorney series at all? I'm familiar with both. I was not aware that there was ever a game that combined the two. Yeah. Um, the gimmick of this game is that uh, in the trials, there is a series of witnesses that you talk to all at the same time, and you get them to, like, remind each other of things. So there's a lot of people in the room at the same time talking. Um, yeah. So, um, he... I think my, my neighbor is trying to, like... You know those inflatable Christmas decorations? I think they might be up there trying to get that to work. There's like a motor thing going in the background. I might have to we, mute everything. We can't hear it. It's okay. It Not just yet. It'll go. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially there is a prophecy written by the... We're in like a storybook world. And a dude writes the stories and then they happen. And people in this town hate witches. These are witch trials. Um, and he wrote that... A man would turn to gold, and then his female companion would be blamed for it. Leighton thought that would be a uh, phoenix turning to gold, but uh, Leighton ran in and basically took the bullet for him. So now we are trying to save Maya and figure out who turned Leighton to gold. And Luke is on. Luke is our enemy right now because Luke is upset that uh, the professor got golded. So um, you can't see him yet, but the I, the handsome prosecutor Barnum I think would be a great character for you to voice. Um, Dude, yeah. word up. And he's talking. Everybody's British, too. Oh, yes, we're all British, so good luck. We're all 
British. Oh, fuck yes, he's me. he's a very he's a very proper British. He's a knight. He has a sword and everything. Ah, uh, very, very regal. I understand. A scepter dropped by the accused would naturally tumble to the, to exactly that spot. Objection! Inqui this, this is awesome. <laughs> Inquisitor Barnum, what you're saying amounts to nothing more than a baseless assumption. You are on edge today, Sir Blue Knight. Is it because your friend is on trial? Perhaps you'd better cool yourself down. Well, anyway, the court accepts the scepter as evidence. Thank you, my lord. Talia Magica added to the thing. Goldor the spell. Um, <laughs> Inquisitor Barnum, may I ask you something? What is it now, Sir Blue Knight? We know that one of the gems is for the spell Goldor, but what about the other one? Uh, oh yeah, and, um, each witch trial seems to have a staff that has two spells, so that's also something we have to take into account. Ah. A naive question. Huh? Oh, I totally skipped that, my bad. Something about naivety. Would a knight put a weapon in his enemy's hand? He's telling me to do my homework, huh? Mr. Wright. I'll look for information about that magic gem in the Grand Grimoire. Thank you, Espella. Oh, this is our friend Espella, who's definitely not a witch. That would be great. Just leave it to me. She seems very happy to help. Glad to not have Maya. The Defender may interrogate the witnesses. <laughs> what we witnessed. I heard a scream and an incantation. And when I enter the room, the victim is already shiny. Nothing suspect there. Oh, yes. And uh, if you also want to take over this guy's bird, Wyatt. <laughs> he, he occasionally talks. All right, let's see. He had a knife in his hand. I don't remember I seeing don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. Are you saying they, you think they quarreled? The other day, I saw you oh, all... Oh, sorry. Yeah? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I oh, think... I'm I... sorry. My internet is, like, bobbing in and out hardcore. All right. Well, we'll do our best. <laughs> the other day, I saw you all together in this very court, and you were evidently friends. Well, yeah, that's true, but what's it got to do with... No! Everyone, listen carefully. No chatting in the back row. What I say now will be in the next exam. Miss Primstone's lesson number five. Friendship leads to nothing but trouble. People would not... What? People would not break up and part their ways in anger if they did not become friends in the first place. Jesus. The, ki the kids in her class must grow up to be model citizens. Oh, dearie, dearie me. What I saw in that room curdled the blood in my veins. Mr. Silk Hat was pointing that glittering knife. Oh, it was his finger. Uh, wait, <laughs> shit. How do I... Do I... Okay. Luke was like, wait a minute. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Is everything okay, Luke? No, of course it's not okay. The professor was a true gentleman. And no gentleman would go around threatening people with knives. I couldn't agree more. Silly boy! I saw your professor pointing a knife. Are you insinuating that I am a liar, you cheeky little whippersnapper? Shut up! What? And the professor would never do that. You don't know him! At least Luke, Luke found someone else to antagonize. Uh, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, what is it? I think there was some important information in Miss Primstone's testimony. Really? Oh, I I'm sorry. It's not my place to say things like that. Huh. I didn't notice anything. What could that be? What was Espella about to say? Yeah, t t t tell me, Espella. I respect you. Espella, why don't you tell us all what you've noticed? Uh, is that okay? It's just something I'd like to ask Miss Princeton about. Well, just go ahead and ask her. Um... Excuse me, Miss Primstone. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, it's you, Miss Espella Contabella. I am delighted I get to read for this character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. Miss Primstone, do you actually see the knife that Mr. Layton was holding? I... I did. As a matter of fact, yes. I remember that glinting blade well. A most frightening sight it was, too. And you saw that from the door, didn't you? Now, if we look at the sketch... 
when the incident took place, Mr. Layton must have been facing this way, correct? All right, why are you here? No, he is deaf mute. No. That must have been the case. Otherwise, the witness would not have been able to see it. Hang on, he, sa he says he's probably gonna have to step out. I'm gonna DM him that, um... Okay. That's a bummer. I think he'd be a good fit for Barnum. All right. Mm. Um, well, that's all I wanted to ask. The more information we have, the better, right? The direction the professor was facing. That could be important. This information shall be added to the court record. I I'm sorry I jumped in like that. I really wanted to help. Not at all, Spella. We were able to get some more info killed that read just fucking 10 out of 10 we were able to get some more info which may just come in handy you think so now then the next witness shall continue with the testimony <laughs> i just want to uh in a painting okay got Leighton. he's pointing a knife Towards the door. Okay. Heard the staff fell on the floor. Uh, nothing, nothing sus about that, I don't think. Oh, right there, face to face. He's not, he's not looking at her. Oh, fuck. I, I didn't have the right thing selected because I, I'm not mm -hmm. used to this UI. Oh, maybe I did have the right thing selected. And I hit it so fast yeah. I couldn't even tell. Oh, I guess I got it right. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. That's what I wanted to do anyway. Take a close look at the sketch of this crime scene. At the time of the incident, Professor Layton and Maya were standing there. Now, we have learned from Miss Primstone's testimony which way the professor was facing. He was facing this way. Oh. You've testified that the professor confronted Maya face to face. Well, that's obviously... He didn't mean that literally, Phoenix. But looking at the sketch of where they were standing, one thing is clear. There is a contradiction in your testimony. Oh. He was stabbing yes. with her, not yes. at... Yes. Someone in chat. He was stabbing with her, not at her. <laughs> Whether they were facing each other or not is of no relevance whatsoever. I'm stupid. <sighs> they were the only ones in that room. One was a victim, thus the other must be the witch. Objection. No. I will ask you to wait before jumping to conclusions, Inquisitor. Think back to Miss Primstone's testimony. She told us that the professor was pointing a knife at someone, threateningly. However, you can see in the sketch that he wasn't threatening Maya. So then, who was he pointing the knife at? Hold on a moment. Luke, what is it? The professor would never point a knife at anyone. You you know he's like a fencer, right, Luke? Like, he is... He yeah, is but that's like a sword, and that's <laughs> cool, and it's only when it's one-on-one, -on -one and I think... <laughs> Objection uh, overruled. Swords are, in fact, cool. <laughs> Moving on. See? I'm right. Anyway, I was the one who opened the door to that room, so I was the first witness, and I saw no knife. Miss Princeton's testimony is not reliable. Oh, dear me. Will you look at this child sputtering nonsense and take, talking badly of his elders? Inquisitor Barnum? Yes, my lord. It should pose no difficulty to verify whether or not the victim had a knife. After all, that sparkling golden body of his has been found at the scene of the crime, has it not? Indeed it has, my lord. Court attendance, you heard the judge. Bring the victim into the courtroom. Seems like they're going to bring the golden statue. P Professor? I feel so bad for Luke. Yeah. No! No, he doesn't have an arm! How are they gonna put him out? I think this is the same. They did a twist like this in the uh, fifth Leighton game where they were like, quote unquote, turning people into statues, but they were really just like kidnapping them and replacing them. Mm. Look at that. 
Uh, did it get damaged in transit? Nick, you saw it. So this is the power of the gold transmutation spell. Most spectacular. It looks like the work of the finest artisans. Or artisans. Oh, that's probably that's probably also what happened to um Belduke. If if they got like uh swapped and snatched. Oh, I yeah. assure you it is the work of no artisans, my lord. By the way, the missing arm has not yet been found. It was right there on the floor, you idiots. We kicked it under the table. Don't worry. I can't believe they, this, Professor. They the, the arm drops on the floor and they go to pick it up, and Jean is like, sorry, you're not allowed to touch anything in here, as per the Inquisition's rules. I You I am up. I am the Inquisition. <laughs> I suppose I should add the victim to the evidence. The poor professor who, while searching for evidence, became evidence. Golden Layton, a rare five-star drop. Almost as rare as Tiny Layton. <laughs> this is unfortunate. I thought the evidence would be as good as gold. But although it technically is, we are still no closer to discerning whether or not the victim was holding a knife. Maya, no, don't. What? <laughs> the professor didn't have a knife. And also, there was another person in that room. The real witch was there too. Please, believe me. Accused, do I really need to warn you again? Inside the cage, you are to behave like a bird that has forgotten its soul. Speak again and you shall be punished. Maya, quick! Speak again! <laughs> or are you in a particular hurry to taste the flames of justice, little bird? That, that is my tiny Leighton joke. Every time you and Yam mm -hmm. do that, it fucking cracks me up. Objection! But it, it's true that someone else could have been at the crime scene. Look at the sketch. The victim was facing towards someone, and that person wasn't Maya. Sir Blue Knight, your ignorance is no longer even a surprise. Huh? You do not know what transpired at the crime scene. You think this man was pointing at another person, you say. Let me tell you this. Nearly everyone in this court other than you knows what Sir Hat was pointing at. What? Well, honorable witnesses, is that not so? Oh, I am here, Punch and Bag the First. Love me some gossip and stories of the occult. Elusive like mist, the magical beast, its chilling breath brings a What? I didn't even try. Oh, dear. I, I'm sorry, Siv. You're being thrown all these curveballs. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. I could use some... You could use some education, Blue Knight. I can offer you private tuition, but it will not come cheap. If the professor wasn't confronting Maya... <laughs> Someone... Also, Jello, didn't you realize you hated Ace Attorney after playing this at first? Lol. I like Ace Attorney. It's just the spin-off games have been almost universally bad in their gameplay. The, the latent parts of this game are good. And I really like th at least three out of the uh, six, uh, six Ace Attorney games I think are really fun. Witnesses, you will now testify. Tell us all about this other presence at the crime scene. Oh, no. sloshed. We all know what happened to that alchemist. This case is no mystery. Same place, same magic trick. This time, her luck ran out, and she dropped that magic scepter. The truth obscured by a twisted ruse. The witch couldn't finish, but it did confuse. There you go. That's the first Woo! one that worked. One! It happened because the professor unraveled the mystery behind all these witches. The same magic trick was used. They are referring to an incident from three months ago. 
Much like this incident, a man lost his life to witchcraft in that very room. He was turned into a goat. <laughs> Someone, did I like Investigations 2? Didn't watch the playthrough yet. No, I'm editing down the video for that. Uh, the gameplay of Investigations 2 is dog shit. I will say, I like the writing in that game. When, when we're not playing it and trying to investigate shit, it was really fun to read through. It literally would have been a better visual novel than a, uh, I mean, yeah. it is a visual novel, but you know what I mean. Um, Even visualer. Every every single tr case, trial-wise, was stupid in that game, and they were all badly paced. Uh, the alchemist. Oh, oh that's me. He suffered death by strangulation. Finger marks were left on his neck. He had locked himself in his study, and the key was still in his pocket. In other words, no one could have entered that room. The perpetrator disappeared from a locked room, just like in this case. A large amount of powdered medicine was spilt all over the floor. Powdered medicine? Sir Belduc was an alchemist. He possessed various medicinal concoctions. Due to the presence of that powder, had anyone entered that room, clear footprints would have remained. Yet there were none. That's the kind of mystery that the professor would have loved to solve. Thus, there were two unnatural circumstances to Sir Dwelduke's death. The culprit's disappearance from a locked room, and the fact that they appeared not to have walked on the floor. It's almost as if they flew away. So they went through the green hole and behind the painting. What? In other words, it couldn't have been the Demir magic that was used in my case the other day. Seems like the killer levitated above the floor, strangled Belduke, and vanished into thin air. But what does this have to do? What does that have to do with this trial? <laughs> it has been three months since that murder. Someone in chat made a good joke. All right. <laughs> ah, hold on, I'm getting a headache. Oh. Uh, despite that, we still haven't been able to find the witch responsible. But now, having eluded us for so long. Here she is. Ba -ba. That which has finally been brought to justice. What? what? No way. Now he thinks that Maya killed the alchemist, too. We weren't even here back then. But it's not like I can explain that to him. Well, then, why don't you interrogate the witnesses? Now that you are aware of the connection between the two murders. Objection! You can't be serious. Three months ago, we weren't even. Shut up. What? Defender, you may interrogate the witnesses. May their testimonies lead us to the truth. He going. <laughs> we all know what happened to that alchemist. This case is no mystery. Same place, same magic trick. Okay. Um, Chris couldn't vanish, but did confuse. Happened because the. What do you mean? What do you mean he unraveled it, Luke? And that mystery is... The witch's identity, of course. I can't believe I'm getting stared down by a little kid. Don't get me wrong. I want to believe you and Maya. Uh. But I I saw the witch's scepter on the floor. No one else could have dropped it. When I saw the professor, everything went black in front of my eyes. But I did hear the scepter fall to the floor. Everything went black. I didn't hear a noise, but I'm going to check. Nope. Okay. There was a witch in that room, and it had to be Maya! Luke, if only the professor were here to tell me what to believe in. Oh, Baby. <laughs> Just come on. <laughs> Luke, come on. What do you think, Mr. Wright? We need to dig down to the truth as soon as possible for Luke. I hope we can do it. <laughs> It'd be easier if there were some clear contradictions in their testimonies, but I haven't noticed clear anything. Oh, shit. Testimonies, but I Sorry. I clicked a little too far to the left. Perhaps... Oh, my bad. We should take a step back and observe each witness while we're not the ones speaking. Okay. I'm actually... I just remembered something I wanted to do last time. I'm gonna put my volume a little lower so that I'm closer to your volume. The four of them are listening to each other's testimonies. That, I know how this works. Sure. Blee, 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 blee. Oh. 
Legs. <laughs> All right. They are losing me. Would you care to elaborate on that, Miss Primstone? You could say that I am a scholar, and my knowledge is vast and diverse. I know a thing or two about witchcraft. Therefore, I have a very good idea of the type of magic that must have been used this time. The magic behind this mysterious figure that appeared out of nowhere, gliding through the wall and vanished in after making the kill. Indeed, yes. And the witch's scepter confirms my theory. Yep, it's kind of hard to move this around. A brilliant deduction. I am honored to have studied under an excellent teacher such as yourself, Miss Primstone. I have no friends. My only friend Aww. is my Duke. My Duke? She was his teacher? Actually, I guess that kind of explains a lot. Our occult crime analysis have arrived at the same conclusion. Mr. Wright, I found it. The page of a purple magic gem. The spell is called Famalia. Famalia. It means family. No one gets left behind. The spell Familia bound within this purple gem is used to summon a familiar. Familiars appear out of nowhere, glide through the air, and vanish when their task is com accomplished. Oh, that is not what I expected it to look like. They are oh, evil... It'll just be the goat. Hmm. They are evil, bloodthirsty spirits used by witches to perform outrageous crimes. Evil spirits... Are you saying the witch used a familiar to? Boom! It's like he's doing a long shot. Yeah. It was the familiar that took Sir Balduke's life, and now it has appeared again. Sir Silcat was probably trying to ward off the evil spirit with his knife. But what good is a knife against an occult creature? It completed the task given to it by the witch and promptly vanished. Thus bringing us to the conclusion that... Why would she even use the familiar if she could just use the gold spell? You're right. Sir Balduk and Sir Silcat were both killed by the same witch. What? What? What an unexpected turn of events. The two incidents have been shown to be connected due to the same witch's scepter having been used in both... Ca oh, he was describing the previous case. All right. That's a cool, cool gem. Oh, this is terrible. Now Maya is accused of two murders. <laughs> the, the green gem is a spell that allows you to pass through anything so long as it's green. <laughs> <laughs> I dig that, actually. Oh, dearie, dearie me. I was right, as always. This gruesome murder will be in the next exam. Make sure to take notes. Now I shall divulge what really happened. We are all ears, Miss Primstone. That hatmaker was pointing the knife at the witch's familiar. Okay. Hold it. Did you actually see the familiar? Oh, dearie, dearie me. No, I did not. When that boy opened the door, the familiar had just disappeared. Had the boy opened the door sooner, no doubt we all would have seen it. Luke, no thoughts? Okay. Traumatized. If he were my student, I would have made sure to teach him not to dilly-dally! Fuck you! Is everything alright, Luke? You seem to be deep in thought about something. No, it is not alright at all! Is there something in Miss Primstone's testimony that you'd like to comment on? That's what I keep telling you! The professor wouldn't point a knife at anyone! Deary, deary me! What an impertinent child! I'm telling you, I saw a knife. I distinctly saw the glint of a sharp blade. At any rate, as we can see now, the victim's arm is missing. As such, there's no proof that he held a knife. Objection. That is but a mere detail. It matters not. A mere detail? Matters not? Someone in chat, when's it gonna get to it being his pointer finger already? I mean, yeah. Oh my. Anyhow, I wonder, where could that missing arm be? Yeah, that ought to be looked into! Oh, shit. I think there might have been a... I think someone might have had a little ding there when he said that, because I was able to move the thing around. Ugh, wish I could go back. Oh, that's right, the arm. Wasn't it found at the crime scene? Am I crazy? I swear 
I've never saw there, a There it is. Yeah, you called it, Siv. Hang on. <laughs> Mister, do you have something you'd like to share with us? <laughs> Mr. Amir? It's Mr. Amir Punching Bag, the first to you, Bluey. The likes of you ought to show some respect to a future man of wealth such as me. You seem to be looking ahead to a future of newly gained riches. I can look wherever I'm bleeding, please. And anyway, why are you looking at me like that? I don't know about that golden broke's right arm. Did he pawn it? Me. <laughs> yeah, he, he pawned it, dude. I, I assumed he just stole that gold from, like, that guy's cabin or whatever. What is it, Aspella? He melted it down. Oh, no! I may be wrong, but there's something about that man. Wouldn't you say he looks, um, drunk? <laughs> it's not just you. Everything about him is so shady it makes me want to double-check my pockets. It's a fun line. Mr. Amir, stop pretending you don't know anything. I Nick is so much better when he doesn't have to bounce off of Maya. Stop pretending you don't know anything about the victim's missing arm. P -p pretending? I told you I know nothing. Not a zero nil. I ain't seen it or heard about it or put it in me pocket. Put it in your pocket? It wasn't me. Honest. Seriously, I got nothing to do with it. Who was that? It was a pawn. He oh, it, it, yeah. It is the pawn guy. Uh, order, order. Who is that person? He's gone. <laughs> uh, you, you I, or I me. assume he's going to be arguing with him, so. You want to know who I am? I'm Bruce the pawnbroker. Mm. And this man is a shameless cheating bum. He had the nerve to lie to me. What did he lie to you about? I'll tell you. Well, on the day of the crime, Amir came to my shop. He walked up to me saying he got his hands on a superb work of art and rare gold dust. I think I know where this is going. That work of art, could it be... I've got it right here! Good. Oh. Just like I thought. That's... Oh my. Pretty fucked, actually. I like how they kicked everybody else up the stand. It's pure gold, ex exquisitely crafted. It was entitled mm, Towards Tomorrow or something like that. I'd never seen a piece of gold so fine before. And so, suspecting thing, I paid that rascal a rather handsome sum. Oh, who would have thought? Well, oh, and what am I hearing now? That it was a human arm, no less. You, sir, are a monster. You're as bad as a witch's familiar yourself. I didn't know it was his arm. Oh, I swear. When I saw it, it was already like that. What do you mean? I was last to the scene and it caught me all right away. The golden arm pointing up at the ceiling. So you just stole it? That doesn't make it better. <laughs> Who are you, Maya? With such optimism and authority. I thought, it looks like it's showing me the way to a better, brighter, richer tomorrow. To me, it was a work of art. A precious one at that. And then it found its way into your pocket and you pawned it. You mounted it on a crude stand, gave it a tawdry title and passed it off as some kind of a sculpture. <laughs> Don't try and look away from the truth now. Down it, I can look wherever I don't please. Yeah, I'll look away from the facts and forward to the future. Always look on the bright side. That's the me punching bags motto. I am here now. Oh, he just put it back Emotional on. Emotional support. Where were we now? Ah, oh, yes. The victim's arm has now been successfully reattached by one of our masterful craftsmen. My favorite part of doing a British accent is you can kind of, and old people, is uh, I have terrible breath support. And you can kind of 
pass that off as a character choice instead of me <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> the Knights of the Court, you may resume the Inquisition. At least one thing's clear now. As everyone can see, the victim definitely wasn't holding a knife. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Seems I may have been mistaken after all. When you think about it, the victim had already been turned into gold when they entered the room. According to the witnesses' testimonies, that was the case, yes. Well then, I'm sure you'll concede that it was an easy mistake that the glittering point- Uh, easy to mistake that glittering pointing finger for a knife. Indeed, the victim's finger has a glint to it resembling that of a sword's edge. Such a sense of power and intensity. It's enough to send a shiver down the spine of anyone being pointed at. No puzzle is a match for the power of the professor's pointing finger. <laughs> Unfortunately, to graft him back together, we uh, did need to take some gold from the rest of his body. I am now tiny gold Layton. <laughs> I guess no one remembers I'm known for pointing like that too. I think your pointing finger makes quite an impression too, Mr. Ron. <laughs> She's just taking pity on me. <laughs> <laughs> is that all you had to say, Sir Blue Knight? Huh? As I said before, whether the victim had a knife or not is completely irrelevant. Yeah, what he said! You better apologize to me now, badgering me for no reason like that. Is, there all, is that all there is to it? Or could that arm hold some other clues? We've come this far, maybe there's something else you could ask about. She's right, I need to ask some more questions. Well then, Mr. Amir, perhaps you could tell me one thing about that arm. Uh, where was it lying, or where? when did you find it? Probably where was it lying, right? You found the arm on the floor pointing upwards, you said. Yeah, I did. Find his keep, as I say. It was pointing straight up at the ceiling. The arm somehow happened to fall down in such a way that it landed upright. What are the odds of that? Actually, that reminds me of a puzzle. Now, if you could just show us on the floor plan here. I'd like to know the exact spot where you found- Oh, it's in the middle of the circle. Sure, I remember that well. It was right- Oh, nope, it's right here. Uh, mm. beer be real quick. Okay. Mm, yes. That's where you would expect it to have fallen. Uh, no, he was facing the other way. If you keep looking at that sketch so intensely, you shall burn a hole in it. Or perhaps... You're going to claim there's a contradiction in it somewhere. This arm is the final clue left by the professor. Even after- No, I'm talking. Move the camera towards me. God, I know he's, he's so fucking handsome, but just move it over to the- You guys! <laughs> Namely, the key to solving this case. It's not a knife, it's a key! Well, Defender, do you see any problems in the locations as marked on the sketch? Actually, there is a problem. Of course there is a problem! <laughs> and where would that be precisely? The professor's arm, uh, the professor's arm has armed me with some vital armaments. Its location leads to a huge contradiction. <laughs> Gold mole! <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I'm editing that right now. Like, literally, that scene. In, in that case, why don't you enlighten us and show us this so-called contradiction? What contradiction does the victim's arm create? Oh god, I'm... I mean... So, look, I think... I think what it is, is Leighton was pointing this way. So his arm should not be over here. But, as we've seen before, these love to fuck me, so I'm gonna use a hint coin, because these are just bad. Nope, yep, I would have fucked myself. Alright. The contradiction is right here. And this is the witch's scepter. Let's go over the order of events as per the witness's testimonies. First, the, wis the witch cast a spell on the professor, turning him to gold. When all of you rushed to the crime scene, that golden statue fell down, making a loud noise. Next, the witch dropped the scepter. What are you getting at, Sir Blue Knight? All the witnesses agree with this order of events. That's right. They all agree that's how it happened. But then there's the arm. Well, what about it? Spit it out. Let's assume that Maya was the witch. Now, look at this sketch again. 
The witch dropped the scepter after having turned the professor into gold. The scepter tumbled along the floor. That is so dumb. Why is that what I would have thought? Ugh, God, that's so stupid. And was found here, as asserted by the prosecution. She could have just, like, jumped and had it go over the hand. That's very stupid. I'm glad I used the hint coin to dodge that. She was bowling with the scepter! <laughs> Let's use this penny I picked up so I point at the right thing. Yeah, thank God I've got a hundred of those. However, that would be impossible. There's no way it could have been there. Oh. Oh, I, I see it now. Ugh, the arm. It was... I, I don't understand. Like, I would have assumed it went over... Like, the scepter went over the hand, because she got startled, right? I don't know. I, I This is stupid. I'm glad you seem to have noticed. The victim's arm was on the floor here, standing on end. Therefore, the scepter couldn't possibly have fallen that way. Ergo, it couldn't have been the defendant who dropped the scepter. In other words, Maya is not a witch. No, I don't believe you. Put her away. Did you miss this contradiction? It was really stupid. No, I don't need to know what it is. I believe you. Okay. Order! 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 How can this be? The Inquisition's reasoning has been proving proven invalid through just one single piece of unusual evidence. Like a uh, some sort of courtroom. Call it Blayton's magical touch. The professor sacrificed his arm to leave... <laughs> he sacrificed his arm so that Zora would be able to, <laughs> to not kill them. My on Splash. That was amazing, Mr. Wright. Professor? Objection. I'm eating a granola bar. An admirable deduction, Sir Blue Knight. That I cannot deny. Even if we are to assume your reasoning is correct and that the girl in the cage is not a witch. Even if someone in chat... I missed most of this case. Why is Leighton gold? He's always like that. What are you talking about? I said Leighton. He's just shy today. In the many trials I have attended, I have become well versed in certain aspects of magic. One second. Okay. I am all too aware of its potential to confuse people, befuddle their minds, and make their memories hazy. No, no one can resist such a maddening influence. What are you trying to say, Inquisitor? The scepter could not have tumbled across the floor if the arm were in its way. However... Can we be sure that it is where the arm was? Are all of the witnesses able to confirm its location at the time? Probably not, since one of them picked it up and stole it. Objection! We've heard what they had to say several times now. They agreed the scepter fell after the victim fell over. <coughs> and yet, no one actually saw the scepter being dropped. Witnesses, think back to that incident some more. Did the golden statue fall first, or did the staff fall before it? Think carefully about what you have seen and heard. Everything hinges on your testimonies. May your words guide us to the truth and decide the fate of this caged witch. <gasps> oh. <clears throat> Ooh. I was about to get ready to leave, but it seems there is need for further questioning. Testify once more, witnesses. Tell us of the golden statue and the Talia Magica. I was only focusing on the professor, so I don't remember much else. I don't know. I got there last. Besides, that thing was glitting and glittering away, so I couldn't see much else. Bewitched by love or beloved by a witch, the poor girl knows not which is which. Dear in me, I remember how obvious it seems now. The staff was chopped just before the statue fell over. Well, wh wait a minute. What you all said just now is totally different from your previous testimonies. They're fucked. You are starting to notice it now, aren't you? Oh. Oh, what? Hi. <laughs> Should uh, no. I? I need to be careful when I'm, like, switching tabs. Mm-hmm. 
That is the way of magic, such as the effect of this black art tends to have upon those who witness it. The witnesses are not lying, but simply having trouble remembering the truth. This is a little stupid, I'll be real. What a convenient excuse. Confronted with magic, their brains turn to mush, huh? Ever since our ancestors drank from the fountain of wisdom and obtained the capacity for reason, witchcraft has been the one thing to remain incomprehensible, even to the most intelligent of us. Nevertheless, the onus is on us to stand up against magic and pass judgment on these witches. And so here we are, doing battle with the weapons of the wise. Words. With words? Oh, we shall pass judgment upon this supposed witch. Shut up. Defender, you may begin your interrogation and help us arrive at the truth. This case is okay so far. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this one. Hold it. Hold it. But you haven't said anything about that until now. Well, that couldn't have been helped. How so? Now, now, everyone, listen well. Pencils in hand, be sure to take notes. Miss Primstone's lesson number four. Memories are not always pretty. Some things are better forgotten. Trying to remember them only leads to trouble. This will be in the exam. Oh, I probably should have been looking. You are so fucking stupid. You're saying that the victim <laughs> fell over and broke Sorry. his arm off after. Wow. Correct! Well done! And so the contradiction is no more. Objection. But that's inconsistent with all the previous testimonies. You're quick to forget what I've told you, Sir Blue Knight. The witnesses are not lying, they are merely having trouble with their little pee pee brains. We must do our utmost to find the truth within what they say. <sighs> it's no use. These guys aren't making any sense. What Inquisitor Barnum said must be true. They've been confused by the magic. Espella. We always try to make sense of what we see. So, when we... What we see makes no sense, we lose track of what's real. I guess that makes cross-examination a little pointless. At least when everyone here believes it's so... What? At least when everyone here believes it's so easy to get confused by magic. Well, we need to do something or else Maya will be done for. Maya, try talking again! I'll listen to the witnesses. <laughs> Into the fire. <laughs> I'm immune! <laughs> God damn it. No! The devil! I'll listen to the witnesses again and try to find something we can use. Good luck. Okay. Let's let's try birdly. <laughs> Would you mind translating your song into plain speech? I shall simplify it once more just for you, esteemed knight of the court. First of all, let's talk about love. It's a pretty <laughs> neat slant rhyme for co- No. <laughs> is it cuff? Cuff. Help us out, Brits. Help us out, is it cuff? I mean, if it's a cuff? slant rhyme, it's cove then, right? Yeah. Then we have the word witch and its homophone, witch. Ah, uh, right. Next, we have the delightful consonants of beloved and bewitched. It is ultimately, excuse me. I'm confused. Sorry. <laughs> to be honest, there is nothing more to it. It is merely an artistic expression of my feelings. So... It's got nothing to do with the case, does it? I am a well of melodious words and poetic music. That is my only claim. Ah! <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. Who? What could my pain's partner, Cracker, be thinking about now, I wonder? Perhaps I should sing a song about it. I oh, heard a, a play. Yeah, shit. Hang on. I sh no, please. That's fine. Okay. Uh, let me Let me do that again then. I also heard it. The problem is, like, it doesn't register in my brain often until, uh, um, press. Until, like, one second afterwards. Mm -hmm. And by then, it's always too late. 
I can't skip past this. Oh but yeah, Luke can talk to Cracker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Boop. Mr. Amir, you seem to be pondering something very deeply. What? You caught me out of air there, Bluey! Did something in Mr. Birdley's statement catch your attention just now? I, assu I assume I'm supposed to do that late game one, but I'll, I'll see what this is about, too. No, nothing in particular. I was just thinking. That bard song really got to me. I kind of feel it in my heart. I appreciate your appreciation of my art. You know, his, uh... His when he when the when Birdly is uh got his head tipped down and you can see his hat, it kinda looks mm -hmm. like the Welcome to Night Vale logo. You oh, know I, I meant to ask you something. Why don't you become me private bard? You could sing all about the heroic life of a mere punching bard the first. Oh, you know what too? His necklace thing, Amir's necklace thing, is it's got one red gem, but the rest are emeralds and uh, amethysts. Hmm. I could gladly sing of your adventures if it pleases you, kind sir. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Show me what you got. Very well. As per your request, oh, grand me punching bag, the first will new fortune quench your thirst. Having bravely flitched the golden arm, filched arm, not flitched, the golden arm, now you've duped the pawn shop man. Uh, it's Mon. It's the worst slant rhyme ever. Oh, you're right, yeah. I hope my song was to your liking, sir. <laughs> yeah, very poetic. <laughs> your drinking manner is quite inspiring, but whatever is that skull bot so hype? So, we've learned nothing useful at all. Just that Amir has questionable taste in music. I'm so tired. Someone in chat, worst possible response, boyfriends. <laughs> Sometimes it is best not to dig too deeply, Sir Knight. Well then, let us just pretend we heard none of that and proceed with the investigation. I'm going to check because uh, there was one other pop-up at the end of this guy's thing. Yeah. It might just be a mirror again, but you never know. Yeah, it looks like the welcome to... I think it's the wrong way around, but... Yeah, come on. It was here. Yeah, Luke? It's kind of tricky to click and drag that. Hang on! Luke, what would you like to say? I like that Luke is just the one who's helping us. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, I guess I spaced out a bit. Well, what is it, Mr. Wright? You seem to be thinking pretty hard about something during Mr. Birdley's song, uh, the testimony just now. Is there something you'd like to share with us? We should let Maya burn. I, I hate her. I've been thinking about what Mr. Barnum said a while ago. What, when was that, exactly? Or what? Whatever. That humans who witness magic become confused and lose sight of what's real. And they end up not knowing what actually happened. Well, I was thinking of Mr. Barnum might be right. Humans and birds, however! <laughs> and then it occurred to me that there might be a way. I mean, we do have with us... A witness who isn't human! Oh yeah, Luke can talk to birds! <laughs> ah, oh dearie, dearie me! This situ- <laughs> <laughs> This situation seems oddly familiar. I asked him earlier if he remembers the events clearly or not. He said he has a memory better than an elephant and remembers everything perfectly well. You know, actually, taking the opportunity to once again cross-examine a, par a parrot in a game where you have Luke Triton is very clever, to be honest. Yes, no, that's very good. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Luke can talk to animals. Mr. Wright, I know it sounds crazy, but please, let me try. Let me ask Cracker to testify. What? Oh, dearie, dearie me. Should I? 
I'm stuck now anyway, and the witnesses' testimonies are all over the place. A new testimony Just would be- Just over these people. Oh my, a any day. Would be a wild car. But one of my favorite um, Pro ZD dubs is there's this comic um, set for the- uh, It's the DLC of Dual Destinies, which is the first time after the time skip you get to use right again. It's like the first case after he gets his badge back. After a couple, I think seven years or something. And mm. um, Gumshoe's just like, hey, Mr. Wright, I, or uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I hear that Mr. Wright is getting the prosecuted, or uh, you, you know what I mean? He's, he's getting to be in court again. That's great. I had to pull a lot of favors to make that happen. They say he's defending an orca. Of course! Of course, of right? Course is you he's defending an orca! Of course, he's using this amazing opportunity I fought for to defend an orca! Of course! They say that samurai guy you're trying to help out is prosecuting. Of course! Of of course! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's, that's a really good video. Boop. But it's a crazy idea, all right. If I make a mistake now, it'll put me in a tight spot. But Maya says I'm great in tight spots. Defender, are you still with us? This is not the time or place for daydreaming. What do you intend to do? It looks as though you've exhausted all means of a counterattack, Sir Knight in Blue. Why did I say it like that? It is not time you <laughs> drop your sword. If you have... Oh, that's an interesting animation. If you have no further questions... Oh, get you. For the witnesses, Defender, I will in consider your interrogation finished. What will it be, then? Are we finished here? I've got zero time to think it over. Better make a choice now. Should Someone in chat, sorry, we were daydreaming about Wedgeworth. <laughs> Let's hear Cracker's testimony. When you have only one white guy in the courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, the defense would like to summon a new witness. A, a new... <laughs> witness, you say? Who do you have in mind? It's That's a witness early. you all know. By the name of Mr. Cracker. Mr. Cracker. I knew of no man by that name. <laughs> Mr. Cracker! The defense summons its new witness, Mr. Cracker the Parrot! A, a parrot as a witness? Objection. No, obviously no objection. I'm... No, objection. <laughs> no, I'll just get my little dog... Give me a moment. Oh, we're totally hey, gonna boy. get the dog on the stand. It's you know what? I bet Barnum will be accused of something, and the dog will be prosecuting in place of yeah. him. Yeah, some stupid shit like that. This is the witch's court. Joking around will be considered contempt Objection. of court. Objection! Mr. Cracker witnessed the crime. He saw it happen, and he heard it too. He's as valid as a wit. He's actually more valid, <laughs> to be more honest. Valid. No, no, no. <laughs> that bird is nothing but a pet animal. Referring to it as a mister will not change that. Objection. Humans are confused by magic to the extent that they lose sight of what's real. That's what you said yourself, Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Objection. <laughs> Calling me by my full name does not help justify such brash foolishness. The Inquisition is against interrogating a parrot. By the way, kind sirs, I suppose <laughs> you should know that my dear companion never forgets a sound he hears. That's mm. I, I love that voice. <laughs> he remembers everything he hears, huh? It's definitely worth asking Becca to testify. The court sees the situation as follows. The witnesses. What is, the fuck? The witnesses' testimonies do not hold together. In fact, they are as erratic as that bard's songs. I oh. cannot see this. It's true. I cannot see this trial getting any more confusing. Very well. The defense may summon this avian witness. Can you believe it? What's up with Mr. Blue Suit summoning up a parrot as a witness? Summoning? Does he mean look how that familiar was summoned? My hook or by crook, I'll do whatever I can to save Maya. Be it summoning a parrot or a familiar. Whatever it takes. Within the boundaries of the law, of course. I'm a narc. Takes out a Glock. 
<laughs> Guns don't exist here. Therefore. Oh my god. Aww. I'm happy again. <laughs> If only there was someone short enough who he could use as that parrot's roost. I, my time has come. Stop! <laughs> Not so fast. This is a fucking farce. I hardly even know where to begin. But, first of all, what is the matter with that boy looking so pleased with himself? He looks like the cat that got the cream. Oh, that'd be me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can I ask what that acting choice was throughout that whole sequence? <laughs> I was trying to keep my composure. <laughs> Why were you thinking about something? Shut your face. <laughs> it's very easy to shut my face because it's so tiny. I'm gonna put you in a <laughs> duffel bag and throw you in the river. It would be easy to do that given my stature. <laughs> Okay. I already wrote that line. Sorry. Don't mind me. Just think of me as a punch for cracker, that's all. And just what is the purpose of questioning a bird? A parrot <laughs> may be able to repeat what others say, but it cannot talk on its own. Objection! It's precisely because cracker doesn't talk in his own words that he's able to tell us the truth. What? <laughs> he remembers every sound he hears, even just the ones, with absolute perfection. So let's have him testify exactly what he heard. I, I'm liking this case way more than the first two so far. This is a really good use of this crossover. And if mm -hmm. Cracker can repeat every sound, I, I also hint coined past this stupid bullshit thing because I knew it would be stupid bullshit, can repeat mm -hmm. every sound. I'd say this should be a valuable testimony. I cannot believe this is happening. His little leggies! A witness that cannot talk will not lie either. This idea is much to my liking. Well then, may our new witness, Cracker, testify to the court. Innocent we sin, as they say. <laughs> Sins of the father, as they say. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we wish to know exactly what you heard from the beginning of the incident. Crash, boom, bang, ow, my leg. Oh, Birdly's face. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> Slam. Oh. I'm, I was kidding. Objection! What, what, what's all this then? Why, well, those are the sounds of the incident, exactly as Cracker heard them! Ludicrous! Evidently this is nothing but a farce after all! What do you mean, Inquisitor Barnum? I must admit, I found the parrot's testimony quite impressive. Even if that bird can accurately recall the sounds, it is clearly useless when it comes to the order of events. You mean there's a problem with the order? First, the witch used the magic to turn the victim into gold. Then the witness arrived. It is reasonable to assume they cried out in terror when they did so. And yet, this testimony does not accurately convey such an order of events. It starts with a sudden scream. Followed by the door abruptly opening. And then a witness crying out. Next, we hear the victim having turned into gold, falling down so far. So reasonable. What, why do you think clang is someone crying out, Barnum? No, it was deary deary me. Oh. But the real issue is as follows. The parrot seems to think the witch cast her spell after the witnesses entered. Such a suggestion is inconceivable. The reason is simple. At that time, the victim had already been turned into gold. Oh. Mm. Indeed, it is as you say, Inquisitor Barnum. Oh, uh, well, don't you know, uh, parrots experience time backwards. <laughs> 
The parrot's capacity for imitation is excellent. I will concede that its testimony does have some entertainment value. However, this animal's testimony cannot be allowed to stand as proof in this honorable court of law. Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. Unlike you holding a sword. Don't let it crack off just like that! <laughs> <laughs> Me when I'm trying to introduce my white friend to my other friend, Chris. <laughs> Do you now see how foolish you were to summon this parrot as witness? Oh, not good, Phoenix. Not good at all. Uh, but birds can stand in court. I am proof of that as a phoenix. Should I Shut really... up! Should I really go through with this cross-examination when it feels like everyone in this court is against me? Never stop you before. Cross-examine, cracker! The defense wishes to cross-examine the witness. What? Are you serious? Did you not hear what I said? Are you choosing to ignore my words? A witness that cannot talk cannot lie either. This parrot's testimony is the naked truth. Barnum, take off your clothes. He's simply repeating the sounds as he heard them. It's humans who make assumptions about the meaning of those sounds and arbitrarily decide whether the testimony's good or not. But, as knights of the court, shouldn't we be striving to uncover the truth to which this parrot holds the key? The truth, you say? Very well. Show us the truth that this bird purportedly... I missed that last knows. one. Interrogate that parrot! Meanwhile, I'll sh I'm going to sit down. Will you? Will you do it, Mr. Wright? Do you think it's hopeless? Um... Defender, you may interrogate the witness. Parrot! I was so hoping the parrot would be on one of the swords. <laughs> Just, I can't get over Birdly! <laughs> okay, so... A scream. Door slams open. Lady. Clang is the either the statue falling over. Or the uh the scepter. Yeah, let's let's check this one. There should be two. That's uh, that must be the sound of the professor falling over, I guess. Professor. <laughs> can, we, can, we get, can we get that again? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Birdley. How may I help you, sir? I'd been meaning to ask this before, but why are you still on the witness stand? Are you suggesting that I should leave my dear partner alone with strangers who cannot even sing? Huh? The very sight of Cracker causes the finest of songs to effortlessly form in my mind. He loves this bird so much. So much. She's so proud. Stilton cheddar or smoked cheese. I like my crackers with any of these. <laughs> That was the cracker song. Is it not crisp and full of flavor? Right. Anyway, would you mind remaining quiet for the rest of Cracker's cross examination? I suddenly oh, got. Him. I suddenly got the munchies. <clears throat> Continue the interrogation. That's the magic incantation, isn't it? Objection. Preposterous. At this stage, the victim was already on the floor. The transmutation spell had to have been used much earlier than that. I wonder. Luke, what about you? Did you hear the incantation too? Um. <laughs> Hang on. He just won't shut up. Mr. Birdley, can I ask you something? So many questions for Birdley the Bard, but most of them I shall disregard. I have felt your keen gaze upon me for a while now. You can't help admiring me, can you? Uh, the statement you heard earlier. Was there anything you'd like to comment on? Hmm, I wonder if there was. My peerless companion, what do you think? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on! Oh, Mr. Wright, he's imitating you perfectly. How adorable. I can't say I share your love for the bird, Espella. Feels like it's mocking me. Carry on with the interrogation. Hold it. 
That, that's Maya screaming. It sounds exactly oh. like her. Yeah, I may have let out a teeny ah! Well, I'm afraid that the witch has spoken into the fire. I was so horrified when the professor suddenly turned into gold like that right before my eyes. So that's when hint coin? I'm not going to use one. I'm not going to use one just yet. Mm -hmm. The accused seems to yearn for the flames so much that she cannot wait to receive her punishment. If she wishes to live any longer, she would be wise to remain silent. La, 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 la. I'm really sorry. I won't talk again, I promise. Hang on, I'm just going to screen cap this. Please. Cat. Unfortunately for you, Sir Blue Knight. I just pictured him doing that big mouth cat. Thing. <laughs> There's no way you can prove that it was the voice of the accused. Objection! She sounds exactly like that. Listen. You're wrong, Inquisitor. Hmm. All we need you to do is right. have her voice print analyzed, and we'll know straight up. Oh shit. You're speaking of witchcraft! <laughs> Analyze what? A voice print? It's nothing. Just forget what I said. Oh boy, this world is driving me crazy. Well then, you may carry on with the interrogation. Did it reset me to the beginning? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Well, let's just keep going. What was the... Uh, was that the sound of a door being opened? Aw, just Luke. Just Luke looking at him. Mr. Birdly, can I ask you something? So many questions. I think this Bird might be the same Bird. one. Yeah. Did I do this one already? Probably not. Let's find out. I think we can all agree this sounds like Miss Primstone, right? When we entered the room. We well, all kind of reacted in surprise. Hang on! Hang on! Mr. Birdly, can I ask you something? What? Okay. Maybe I am supposed oh. to just fucking ignore him. Okay. Uh, I'll, let's go back to that one and not talk to Birdly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually think there's a couple I haven't heard the end of because I ended up talking to Bart uh, Birdly instead. Well, I guess the teacher's voice stifled all the rest. Miss Primstone is known for her stentorian voice of authority, allowing her to easily rise above the chatter of unruly children. I uh, I don't think I've ever heard that word before. Stentorian. Mm -hmm. Her voice would still be ringing in the pupil's ears long after a class had finished. Ah, that takes me back. If only Maya's scream was as easily recognizable. Right, uh, let's move on to the next sound. Okay, um, let's see what happens if I cycle all the way through. And Do you think there's anything important in crack... Sorry. <sighs> there does seem to be a fundamental problem with what he repeated. Why would the incantation come after... Oh, something else turned into gold also in the room, and you didn't check what it was. After the professor was turned to gold. But Mr. Cracker can't tell lies, right? Yeah, he can only repeat the sounds oh. he's heard. Maybe... Bro, what if I'm just imagining, like, Grayerl comes in with a goat and is like, There's new information. This goat has been ungolded. <laughs> just brings it into court. Yeah, that could happen. Maybe we're just... Oh, yeah, because it didn't have any dust on it, remember? Yeah. Ma maybe we're just misinterpreting Cracker's testimony. For the time being, let's have another look at the court record and the Grand Grimoire. Okay, okay. Yes, of course. Yeah, maybe I... Uh... Ah! Let's check. Ah, spell will transmute the closest target within range. Okay, what's this other one do? Okay. Cool.
Oh, shit. Wait, did I somehow miss it? Okay. If something is weightless then, the familiar wouldn't have made a sound, right? I don't think... What, what does that have to do with anything? I, I'm just wondering if there's like a, a sound that's supposed to go along with the familiar, like hitting something or anything like that. Oh, I don't think so. Hold it. Uh, shit. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Okay. Hold on. He says go door, but it's actually gold door. I wonder if that's just a mistranslation or. Let's keep going. I'm sorry, I can't seem to remember. After I saw the professor in that... in that state, my memory of what happened next just isn't clear. I'm sorry, Luke. I know this is very painful for you. Anyway. Okay, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. All right. Damn, that was the first thing I checked, and I wasn't paying enough attention. Okay. Yeah, I kind of thought they were just stylizing it, like the parrot was kind of saying it a little wrong, but uh, yeah. that was a dumb assumption on my part, I guess. Maybe it's something like, let go of the door? Goldor. Goldor. And it's dot, 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 Goldor. There is a critical contradiction in this testimony. No. No. We are all aware of that, Sir Blue Knight. There's a fucking parrot. <laughs> this contradiction is between your so-called desire to find the truth and the fact that you are interrogating a parrot. Be nice to me. That's not what I'm talking about, Inquisitor. There is a contradiction here that makes one thing particularly clear. The fact that we have all clearly made a wrong assumption. How so? Luke, can you ask Cracker to repeat the incantation once more? Right you are. I love that animation pose. That's just great. <laughs> so cute. Godor! Godor! G Godor. According to the Grand Grimoire, the name of the gold transmutation spell is Goldor. Now, Inquisitor, it would seem to me that the spell we've just heard is in fact a different one entirely. Well, I never. Unbelievable. Goldor and Godor. Objection. This, this is ridiculous. Godor summons a door you can walk through. Ah, that wretched bird must have misheard the incantation. No. Cracker is able to imitate sounds perfectly. The incantation was indeed misheard, but only by the people hearing it. Objection! The victim was found already in his golden state. That is proof enough that the Goldor spell was used. Objection! But you're forgetting that Cracker heard this incantation after that spell had already taken place. Which makes it entirely possible that this Godor spell was used as well. In other words, another spell besides the gold transmutation magic must also have been used. Another spell that we haven't yet considered. Now, the next question that needs to be asked is, just what is this Godor spell? Objection. Utter foolishness. This is absurd. As convenient as it would be for you, there is no way that a spell by the name of Godor exists. Mr. Wright, I found a spell. <laughs> Mr. Wright. Ah, uh, what is it? He's right, there's no, no I'm spell. I'm your leg. <laughs> I found it. The page about the spell Godor. Is this no. looking real? What I'm, the hell? I'm pulling your leg. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's listed in the Grand Grimoire. Right here. It exists. What? Uh, what? Parrot. Order, order. I demand order. Just like I thought, Cracker remembered it exactly. But then, uh, what kind of magic is this go door? Well, my lord, the Grand Grimoire describes it in the following way. Gordor creates a portal on two sides of green-colored walls. The portal will disappear after five minutes! What a shitty spell. Creates a portal? On green-colored walls. 
A portal spell? That's so funny. God, aren't you a lucky man? <laughs> it appears even the Grand Grimoire is on your side. <laughs> I'm really amused by this in chat. For some reason, three out of ten spell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's a fatal flaw in your explanation. Huh? What what flaw is that, Inquisitor? It is really quite simple. The color green does not exist. Unrelated, not I'm colorblind. <laughs> Think back to how the alchemist study looked at the time of the incident. Do you remember any green walls? No, don't look behind the painting. Don't, I I'm just gonna think. I'm just gonna kinda go we we know what this is. Yeah. Take that. The walls in the study are coated with white plaster. Not all of them, though. There is just one spot which is green. Oh, there is. I noticed it when investigating the crime scene. You may recall that there was a small painting behind the desk. And for some reason, the wall behind it was painted green. It was what? I recall seeing that painting myself, too. If we look at this floor plan, why would there be a painting on the floor plan? <laughs> really? That's very thorough. I'd say it was around here. Mr. Wright, I'll mark it on the floor plan. Congrats, you're now more useful than Maya ever was. It's more it's been bothering me since I saw it, but now it's clear what it was. At the time of the incident, a portal opened up behind that painting. In other words, that was the wall utilized for the spell Godor. Oh, and maybe the clang or the smash or something was the painting hitting the ground. Oh yeah, maybe. You're certainly persistent. You just want a portal to be there so much, don't you? I mean, I feel like this is a pretty reasonable assumption. The wall behind the painting was green, and that's a fact. Incidentally, I remember that painting well. It was a small landscape piece. Delicious. <laughs> about the size of, say, an open grand grimoire. Yes, it was about that size indeed. A small, adorable picture. Even if a portal had opened in that small patch of green... No person would be able to pass through it. In fact, they'd just about be able to put their arm through at the most. So, will you please explain how a witch could possibly have escaped through a portal this small? He's right, Mr. Wright. No one could have gotten through a portal that small. He didn't He didn't need to get through the portal that small. He opened it to cast the gold spell. Yeah. Have you anything to say? Or are you so crushed <laughs> by the realization... Oh, chat way, chat way funnier than me. Just, no one could have possibly fit through that through that portal. There is one person who could have made it through. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> it was Tiny Layton. A puzzle it solved. It was all a ruse. <laughs> it was all a ruse. <laughs> the portal was too small for a person. It doesn't require much thinking to figure that out. But that aside, a very obvious question remains. If it wasn't a human, then what could have passed through that portal? If it's not just put a person putting their arm through, it could have been the familiar. Yeah. Why don't you answer your own question? You talk as if you know everything, so please enlighten us. A small portal was opened in the wall at the crime scene, and I have all the clues as to what that could mean. What went through the portal was... something else. No human could have passed through a portal that small. Even a witch couldn't have pulled that off. Huh. 
So you're finally forsaking your mistaken assumptions? No, the reason that she golded, the witch golded Leighton is because he was the only one who could have possibly passed through the portal. After I take a little damage, I turn into my small form until I eat a mushroom. <laughs> I haven't finished, Inquisitor. The fact remains that something else could have passed through that portal. Oh, that's me. Right, of course. And just what would that be, Sir Blue Knight? Someone in chat. A small portal for a small gentleman. <laughs> the portal was created after the professor had been turned into gold. The witch had a good reason behind that. She must have had to move something through that portal. Knock. You have captured my curiosity. I'd like to know what passed through the portal. Tell us, what did the witch use that magic portal for? Stave, you fool. Take that. Oh, that might be wrong. Maybe it was for this. What the fuck? Oh, to throw her staff. You're probably right. You know, Blue Knight. You make me wish I could use magic to create a portal myself, so that I could chuck you and that irritating, pointing finger of yours out of this court. <laughs> if only you would leave through a portal and never show up in front of me again. Barnum, I, I thought we were cool. <laughs> ah! I, I, I just get angry when I'm on the stand. Okay, well, I'm going to need an apology in a little time. <laughs> Looks like my reasoning was a bit off the mark. All right. Um, you stupid. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's throw the throw the staff at him. She fucking threw the staff at, Ma at Maya, like, woof! Trying to kill her. Considering the state of the crime scene, there's just one possible answer. And that is the Talea Magica. No. Objection. What, 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 what's all this, then? It's, it's the staff. Don't you remember? The what? The Talea Magica was found at the crime scene. A portal has nothing to do with it. I, okay, dude. I'm, I'm stupid. All right, man. Inquisitor Barnum. You're making the wrong assumption. Wrong assumption. The witch wasn't trying to remove evidence from the crime scene. She wanted to plant it. She threw, but you can't plant a staff unless it's made of wood. I, I hold on, it dude. It is made of wood. Oh. <laughs> she threw the witch's scepter into the room through that portal. Uh, stop it. Barnum run out of energy. You, you and your crazy theories. Do you even realize what you're saying? If she threw the staff into the room, that means... Exactly. She did it to deceive us. Her goal was to make us draw the wrong conclusions. When the incident took place, the witch herself wasn't in the room. She cast the spell from outside. What? Well, then it's fucking Jean. Yeah. Order! Order! Order, I say! And that's not all! There's even more proof that the staff was thrown into the room from the outside. What, what proof? The proof is none other- Oh my god, I forgot you were here. None other than Professor Lake. Can, can we- <laughs> Can we- Can we not have this here? It's like, I mean, it feels disrespectful, if nothing else. Professor Layton's previously oh, severed oh, right arm. I'm watching. The victim's arm. How does that prove anything? None of the witnesses have testified they saw the witch's scepter. However, a few of them claim to have heard it rattling across the floor. That's right. Please take a look at this floor plan. Since the arm was standing upright here, we know the defendant couldn't have been the one to have dropped the scepter. Now, think about it. Where would you need to have dropped the scepter from in order for it to end up here? Oh. Oh! <laughs> That's right. The scepter could have only come from the small portal created by the spell Godor. This is most unexpected. The witch wasn't in the room when the crime occurred. Or at least that's the defense's claim. It's the only thing that explains all the contradictions we've run into. Objection. Sir Blue Knight, with that imagination of yours, you could aspire to write fantasy stories. A nice try, I must admit. However, this line of assertion is futile. There is a glaring contradiction in your words. Another contradiction? Whatever are you referring to, Inquisitor Barnum? 
I'm the witch. I'm done. I'm just... Fuck this. This is the Talia Magica that was used in this incident. As we have established, there are two magic gems in it. One for the gold transmutation spell, Goldor, and one for the... The, 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 the brooch of the... the, the uh, got him. A witch in possession of this staff would not have been able to cast Godor. How much longer do you have until your thing, Siv? Um, not long, honestly. Okay, we should probably find a pausing point, which is a bummer, but yeah. yeah. I think we're, we gotta be at, like, the save point mid-trial, because I'm sure John's about to come into the room. Yes, you're I absolutely right. <laughs> but you can't write off all the evidence supporting my theory as mere coincidence. Why must your argument always be followed by a but? Uh, but you actually meant to say my agreement. What I'm getting at is, this Talea Magica is not genuine. Not genuine. That's right. And naturally, the one responsible for this deception is the real culprit of the crime. Enough of the suspense. It's too much for a man of my age. I'm the 40. The defense shall reveal... In this world, there's no medicine. That's really old. The defense shall reveal what is meant by this so-called deception. Uh. It's, it's, it's a purple gem. I don't even care. I, I'm not... I don't trust these. Yeah. Got it. First, I want to clarify one thing. Can we be certain that the Talea Magica in question is authentic? Yeah, sure. Have a speller use it. <laughs> the metal rod a, in the center B, is called the C. Spell. I will kill you. How are you going to use the Talea Magica? Which <laughs> fucking spears him with his sword. <laughs> <laughs> the metal rod in the center is called the Spina Magica. He cast sword on me. Get him. I did. I'll do it again. The witch's mark on its tip is clearly visible and highly detailed. It is impossible to forge even by the finest craftsmen in all Labyrinthia. I can guarantee you its authenticity. Shit! That leaves us with only one possibility. The forgery in question is the Familia Magic Gem. W what? A forged magic gem? Objection! Slam! That is it. Insult to our investigators. Objection! Yeah, fuck them. Only witches can use what? the powers of these magic gems, can't they? So tell me, how can you know whether a magic gem is the real thing or not? Objection! Hold it there. We know for certain that the spell Goldor was used. It is undoubtedly not forged. But what about Famalia? Did anyone actually see a familiar at the crime scene? Three months ago, when an investigation was carried out into Sir Belduc's death, the results yielded the following conclusion. The spell Familia had been used to summon a familiar, which in turn carried out the murder. And the witch used exactly that to her advantage. Another similar incident at the same scene. Don't you think that would have been the perfect opportunity for the witch to frame the defendant for her crimes? The defendant would be blamed for both the professor and Sir Belduc's deaths, and she'd be taken for the real witch. Oh. That was the real culprit's objective. <clears throat> there is a chapter of the Magic Archive, an old collection of tales of the occult, about the way to test whether or not a magic gem is genuine. Hmm. How can we test it, my lord? It is very simple. A genuine magic gem it is... It's... It's... Com <laughs> it's delicious, is what it is. It's composed of a mineral with a density lower than that of pure water. All you need to do to see I if... I was kidding! Oops, don't make jokes. All you need to do to see if a magic gem is magic is to see if it floats on water. That is simple indeed. All non-magical minerals of our world, with the exception of sapiolite and a few other special kinds, sink in water. These eerily sparkling gems, however, will never sink when put into water. Bailiff, remove this magic gem for immediate examination. The magic gem's to fake? 
What's up with this trial? This is not how it was supposed to be. It's all right, darling. Don't cry. You'll get to see a witch burning today. Sir Barnum never disappoints. Hush now. There, there. Barnum, Barnum, Barnum. Throw it in the milk bucket. Defender, if your theory is correct, this could be the biggest occult crime in history. But another important question remains. I wonder if you can answer it. Who is this supposed real witch that threw the Talea Magica through the portal? The real witch. There's only one person that comes to mind. Frankly, I find it hard to believe, but it's the only possibility. Once I indict her, there'll be no turning back. Knowing the consequences, should I... Should I give them her name? Mr. Wright. <sighs> In Labyrinthia, witches are punished by fire. I know you think that's going too far, but even in a world that seems so insane to you, those who take the lives of others must be punished. That's a universal law, isn't it? The witch turned the professor into a golden statue. And that's not all. She took <clears throat> the life of the alchemist, too. And now she's trying to pin the whole thing on Maya. She's a hero. I... <laughs> if she just turned Maya to gold, I, I would never turn her in. But she killed Professor Layton! I... I can't just let her get away. I love how they're like justifying like it's okay to throw someone in the fire as though I don't give like as though I give a shit. Well then, defense, let us hear your theory. Who is the witch responsible for using Godor and then throwing the scepter through the resulting portal? Bye bye. When you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be true. There's only one logical possibility. It has to be that person. The real witch is Jean Grayerl. Uh, Grayerl. I've heard that name somewhere. Uh, wait, isn't that the butler who served Sir Belduc? That's that correct. the butler. Objection. That's a baby. You seem to love rolling out these ridiculous suggestions, but you ignore the obvious. Jean Grayerl is male. Have you checked? What? Have, have you checked? Like, are you sure? Inquisitor Barnum, tell me one thing. Is it only females who can be witches? Are you daft? Of course it's only females. No. <laughs> Never in the history of this court has there ever been a male witch. Times they are a change. <laughs> You're so utterly ignorant. You should be ashamed of yourself. All right. Well... I'd like to ask another question. Is Jean Greyer really a male? Man, Nick, you just gonna you just gonna out somebody? Just cause they murder your friend. Hmm. <laughs> what? What a ludicrous question. The defense is certain that Jean Greyerl is the witch responsible for using magic on Professor Layton. Objection. Objection. Will you stop fooling around? This is a groundless accusation. Objection. Groundless, you say? I'm afraid that's where you're wrong. Jean Grey Earl is flying. Wait, fuck. Look, that, means right you're, there. that means you're right, actually. Hang on. At the time of the crime, Jean Grey Earl was in the room next to the alchemist's study. And on one of the walls in that very... Uh, and one of the walls in that very room was painted green. It was. Well, I mean, yeah, that had to be the assumption. Otherwise, the thing never would have worked. What's more, that green wall was the one adjacent to Sir Belduc's study. Bro, he fucking strangled him th through a wall. Cool. Inquisitor yeah. Barnum, quickly, have the butler summoned to the court. Have Jean Grey Earl brought here immediately. No. Certainly, my lord, it shall be done. Shows up in their jammies. What's no happening? Flies down like a vampire. I am here. Da 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 da. Well then, Mr. Wright, shall we begin? John Grayerl. Oh, I'm I'm not talking anymore. Okay. It would seem this trial has turned in a new direction. I think we all need a bit of time to take it in, and Siv has to leave. We shall take a brief intermission. Inquisition, defense, 
Sharpen your swords and wits to prepare yourself for the next stage of this battle. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Shall be done, my lord. By the time we resume, the examination into the magic gem should have ended as well. <laughs> you say that like it's going to take more than eight seconds. <laughs> now, the court Man, is a Do you know how long it takes them to find water in this world? I mean, I, I guess. The court is adjourned for a brief intermission. Turns into a parrot. All right, great. It should give me a save point. 